Chasing the Racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles. 3, 2, 1 and welcome back to episode 167 of Chasing the Racing Podcast. And it's just the two of us this week, so no guest. Uh, Dom is fresh back from Armoy, literally just got off the boat and came straight here. So uh, we're going to have a bit of a catch up on, obviously, the weekend at RMI plus just a general catch up. We've got a load of Patreon questions and uh, yet now and again, it's nice just to have uh, just the two of us just to st- yeah catch up on like what we've been up to and stuff. To be fair, I'm more nervous right now. You nearly messed up the beginning there. You almost said instead of three, two, one, welcome back. You said cheers to the race and it's uh, no, I think I'm more nerve wracked now. Normally we're picking on someone, aren't we? It's normally us ganging up. Never mind uh-huh. talking about ourselves. So um, obviously straight off the boat from Armoy, yeah, and it's the first time you've been out since your operation. It's the yes. first. Uh, it, yeah, I know yeah. you were, you were hoping to get out uh, on the. Pitch bike but it didn't really work out so that went to tits mate straight in at the deep end um <laughs> to, uh, do you want to give a quick rundown on uh like how the how the weekend went oh jesus i was about to say i think we should almost go back in time because i'm where do, we've just come back from the bennett's track day now did we talk about hold on where did we go before that so no hold on, we did tommy hill didn't we yeah now when did we do tommy hill that was last the... last week at brands now what day was that though did we did you do practice or yeah, I tell you what, everyone thinks we've got this fully programmed and cl- it like we just the, wing it. Thursday or Friday or something. Thursday or Friday, isn't it? So yeah. I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna counteract your question and go straight into the deep end. Let's keep it in timetable. So we were down at Brands, and the weather was a bit shite now and then, wasn't it? Hitty missy. Yeah. And you, yeah. How did you get on? You remind me. I'm being genuine here. I cannot yeah. remember. Yeah. As we have we've done the Lee Jackson podcast since, but we didn't really talk about Brands to be fair. Uh, yeah, it was all right. Um. So the Friday practice, it was on and off rain a little bit. So both sessions were kind of like hampered with the weather. Um, and then gone. I was about to say, I was the only lads who went out because it was like half an hour in before anyone remotely went out. And it was you and Josh Brooks that went out in the wet and you two banged in like the top times. Yeah, usually sessions like that, there's not a great deal to gain and I would usually just sit in the garage, but it it just so happened that uh, we had a new engine in and obviously it had been running on the dyno but you never you always want to just get some mileage on it so it was a sort of perfect session for me really just to put some wets in and just go on I mean it wasn't it was like a dry and track Uh, like I say not not much to gain but obviously it was good just to get some miles on the engine so uh, it sort of served a purpose was it good to have Brogy back in yeah, yeah. Um, so at the weekend, um, Phil, who's usually my crew chief, obviously Phil Crow, uh, wasn't able to make it down to the race, and so we didn't. So I didn't really have like a sort of crew chief figure. Yeah. But um, yeah, Steve Brogan's uh, got his own Super Stock Six Hundred team, and so he's in the paddock with uh, with his lads there, and uh, he very kindly came up and just gives a hand like during the session, just gives a little bit of a direction. Uh, so yeah, it was I was really grateful for his help, and um, yeah, I mean we managed to get through the weekend so all good now as a per- like as a reference could you feel a massive difference between the engines no so um, oh, for those that's pe- a bit good <laughs> for those people that don't know it's uh, the the old BMWs used to be an S1000 and they brought the M1000 in and that that coincided with I think that was when they brought the wings in so that's how you tell the difference between the two so like for example at the TT Dom was racing an S which is the old, yeah. old model and then the M is the, the newer one with the wings so we started this year on an M1000 and uh, unfortunately it blew up in the very first race of the season so uh, we're, we've had an engine on order ever since and we had to put an old S engine so it was just one of like Croy's engines in as a as a spare um so that's what I've been on all all season so far and then this new M engine came so we're, we're running on run it in on the dyno and then this weekend of Brands was the first time but uh yeah interestingly yep. enough it was um I mean if you, it it just so happened that I, like this is probably the we I would say I th- this is the weakest um I've been in the speed traps at the weekend uh, all all season. It was it was really weird because I mean both the S and the M are both super stock spec engines. Ah, but there and is when, big differences between the engines, though. Look, quite big differences. Well, no, no. Well, the M, but, the, the M Sport is titanium internals. Yes, but, so, ju- but just to say, when I had the S in, so horsepower wise, it wasn't particularly uh, that that strong. But on the track, like say at Knock Hill, I was 
really, really competitive in the speed traps, really competitive. And then uh, when we've when we put the M in, I was expecting like about five or six more brake horsepower, but I was I, I was like yeah, right. I think I was second last in the speed traps overall on the Cataclean speed trap thing. And if you look at my speed traps. Even in compa- comparison to Superstock, I'd be, I think on the straights, I would, I would have been like outside the top 10 in Superstock with the. Really? Yeah. So in, I, I don't know if we're just, I don't know what what's going on, but in, in terms of actually on the track, it felt good. Um, yeah. It felt, felt reasonably good. And to be honest, it's not the be all and end all the top speed. Um, often, like say horsepower wise, I think top BSB super bikes, you can start getting like sort of two, I've heard rumors of like 220, 230 30s, horsepower. Yeah. But, with that extra horsepower so from say super stock bikes from like 205 to you can get from like 205 to 210 ish i think on super stock when you introduce all those extra like say if you put an extra 20 brake horsepower Mm. you might be able to get a bit of an advantage on the straight but you also cause a lot of problems with that power um especially with no electronics you know it's, it's not always easy to get like super stock bikes have got that much power these days so um yeah and it's um I'd be interested. To see, I tell you what, I'd love to see those figures. though. you know when you're comparing it against stock times, yeah. Because like the Fireblades, it's like that. The Fireblades taken over, isn't it? But they're like they are 217 stock. It, the, yeah. It, well, with pipes. And now, don't get me wrong. Everyone, listen to this now. Brake horsepower figures are pub figures. You they're know not. What I mean? They're not uh, 217 on like a not when I'm uh, comparing with 205. If if a super. St- like it obviously depends no. which dyno what day you can basically make whatever numbers you want but in terms of like the difference like say if you put them on the bsb dyno on a bsb day with bsb yeah, tires yeah. I just, I, i'd be amazed if you've seen anything over the, if you if there's been more than 210 on a super stock bike i'd be absolutely amazed we need Frank Raffle back on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need the Frank Raffle. The highest that when I was in Superstock and I had a very, very competitive bike in Superstock, the highest that we ever got on Frank's Dino with Superstock tire was two o five. Right. And as far as I'm, and there was no bikes that were particularly much faster than mine, so I can't see it being. If there's been more than two ten, I can't. Like, I'd be amazed. It is interesting though, because like, like, like that was my point. It was a bit like you know, brake horsepower figures mm. or pub crack. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like who's got the most spell put the power down. But at the, at the weekend, mine was two o five with a superbike tire on, with a superbike tire, and that's the M. So yeah, yeah like now. Obviously, going back to your point, though, there are big differences between the engines, the internals. It's about weight inertia on the crank. You know, the M being steel components, like the, the valves, the conrods. Well, when I rode the... I can never say this word right. Help Morgan, help, help me out. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, like, when we ran the ZX-10, the conrods alone... Do you know how much the conrods were? Go on. They're like 1,500 quid or something. 1,500 quid, and there's four of them. You know what I mean? When you compare that against the steel internals. So part of me, when I, when we got the, the S1000 for this season, that was a huge contributing factor for me, was the rebuild cost. You're thinking they're spending nearly seven grand in parts alone, never mind labour, mm. and it's shitting itself potentially. You know what I mean? One slip valve, bang, wallet there, goes your wallet. You know what I mean? But stepping into that... It's really interesting to see a lot of your caliber not really feeling much of a difference. You know, it, it, was it like, you know, because like with the weight and the crank, there'll be more bottom end, more drive, more picking out. This is all in theory on paper. This is how mm-hmm. X should feel to Y. But that's interesting how you're not feeling a big, big difference. No, not you know much, what I mean? Not much at all. Because there is an RPM difference with that weight. You know, it's all up in the top end. In, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> in like Motorcycle Magazine, this is what they'll be telling you, but no, there you it's are. It's the same. I've, I've Chrissy backed, Rouse, the myth buster. I've back to back the uh, the Kawasaki with the red top engine as well. So I once had right. a red top engine, my bike blew up and put the other engine in and we lost. I think it was something like 800 RPM. Right. And it, it was noticeable, but it, you're talking like around a lap, maybe like a couple of tenths. Yeah. A couple of times for somebody that yeah yeah it is like very very small it's small gains but it's one of those things in it when you get to the higher up you get the smaller gains get more and more expensive so you know like say if if you went to a superbike team and you said oh there's this like new thing it's 10 grand but you get a tenth of a second everyone would buy it because it's at that that level a tenth massive so yeah it is meant isn't it it is meant it's just it's it's the game it's we're all, we're all sheep in this game it's mental nothing nothing changes that you know you, you race on a sunday you sell a bike on a monday don't you 100 mm. percent. it's like um 
it's meant like you know look at the 700 mm -hmm. you know what i mean the 700 thing and like i tell you well that's a very interesting point that i bring up because we do we we didn't talk about the southern did I, we uh, or did we we haven't now I'll, I'll just come back to that in just a second but um just to you know talking about horsepower and all of that yeah richard cooper came back and absolutely blit oh, not blitz everyone but won the race don't, like after such a long year and after a horrendous injury, came back on a Suzuki, which was is classed as a bit of an old-fashioned bike. It got dyno at 189 horsepower, and he won the race. And that's against, you know, and the, a lot of the other manufacturers are putting out over 200. So it just goes to show that, that's what I'm saying, like horsepower isn't everything. Oh, totally. If you can get it down to the ground. Um, and yeah, well done to Coops as well for that, because I, I can't imagine all the shit he's been through for like the last few years. So uh, yeah, it must have been a hell of a relief. But and yes. Whole, but I tell you what, shouting at that, by the way, I think one sand, now he didn't quite deliver, you'll be hating me for saying this, but he didn't quite deliver it in the results. But um, free practice on that Friday, Charlie Nesbitt, he properly strung a lap together. He was just behind Coops mm -hmm. in that free practices. So he's getting his confidence back, which is great. You know what I mean? So like you say, p ponies on everything in this game, 100%. But even like going back to that point, it's a lot of lads I know in the Rhodes paddock are going Fireblade. Well, because of seeing it, but look what the pageants are doing. Yeah, kind of so thing, since Tom won the championship last year, the yeah. Honda Honda didn't have an official team in uh, in Superstock, but they put that to, uh, the package together. We spoke about it to Harv on the podcast months ago about it, and since then it's it's definitely been the bike of choice this year. The top, if you take like the top ten riders, it's been more or less dominated this year by the Hondas. And pr I would say going into the season, championship favourite was probably Alex Olsen on the on the FHO bike. Yeah. He's done a f good few years. He's got like everything he needs to do the job. And so far, the Hondas have have uh, been taking all the glory. Aside from obviously not forgetting Tim Neve, who was dominating the championship <sighs> on the Yamaha before uh, that that. Act the crash he was involved in, which wasn't his fault. Have you seen him since? Mm, I don't think so. No. No, I'm just, I'm just wondering what his plans are. He's, um, he, I, I, have you seen his X-ray? My the God, things, he, it was horrendous. Jesus and um, now that's a, now that's a fucked pelvis. Yeah, there yeah, is no two ways about it. Massive uh, screw through his pelvis. God and he, love him. He's doing everything he can to obviously get back and uh, back, back on his feet. And uh, but yeah, horrendous injury. I'm just wondering when he's going to make a plan. Well, you know what us race is like. He's just all he'll be thinking about is getting back on a bike. Yeah. And it'll be interesting. But he's a clever lad. You know, it's, race is not going to go anywhere from 100%. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, I've got a, Dom's da one of Dom's many daft questions of the pods. Is Stock Thousand, and obviously Superbike up, but from Stock Thousand being the look like the cutoff, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And I want you to contest this if, if, if you agree or not. But anything below that, a brace brake horsepower figures really important. Let's talk super sport. Um, I don't know. If you, know you know, you know, you know. Again, it's, it's a funny one with with horsepower. Where if, on, watching on the track, you would have watched last year and you'd have seen Jack Kennedy and you'd have seen the Yamahas and. Looking just just by the naked eye, it would look like the Yamahas have got way more horsepower than the six three six by the sp on watching on the track and watching on the straights where if you put them bikes in the dyno the i'm pretty sure they've got similar horsepower very both. similar yeah very um, similar so i don't i really don't know like no. if you're watching super stock you wouldn't look and you you wouldn't think there's there's a, 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 like 15 brake horsepower between coops and say david allingham who he's battling with but the, the is if you put them two bikes on the dyno the the honda is putting out way way more power than the suzuki but on the straight it's not obvious it's not of it doesn't tra seem to translate in in miles power but you're talking about like 190 up kind of thing but you're putting 140 brake horsepower down on a super sport is it, it brake horsepower figure has definitely got to be apparent of that it's like super twin racing there is a huge difference between five brake or five brake horsepower in super twin racing yeah it yeah. is noticeable mm -hmm. you know so it's like it, no it's an interesting concept mm -hmm. that the fact that yeah you need to put the power down yeah there's no two ways about that but when you think that that 636 was couldn't have been ridden any harder or any better than Jack Kennedy and he struggled he did struggle against uh, that Bradley Perry mm -hmm. massively but then this year he swapped round different chassis probably the same brake horsepower it's working but can a lad win so let's put a circle can a lad win on a 125 brake horsepower bike against in super sport this is 125 against 135 10 horsepower yeah no not any what about 8 turning a new year mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's what. Uh, eight? 
Uh, I've, to to be competitive in, I mean, Jack Kennedy's the best rider in Superstock, so okay. I guess the in Super Sport, sorry. So I guess what's the minimum amount of horsepower he could win on? Yeah, against against uh, like a one forty brake R six. You know, what, is, that what's what the, it? is that what Super no, Sport bikes are putting that, out? That's what the kind of train now. But I, who I can't remember who I was speaking to, but they were like like nearly a, like World Super Sport. They're like nearly one hundred and fifty brake, but they're chop they are chopping engines, mind. Really? They are melting them mm-hmm. <laughs> like. Utterly melting them. Just, just an interesting note about World Supersport. So they were obviously at Donington a few weeks ago, and the the pole time was set by Agata one twenty nine nine, I think. Really interest. Like think how much the tires and the engines and everything's came on in all that time. Seven years ago, Kyle Ride did a one thirty point two. Kyle, Kyle would have been second on the grid off his time of seven years ago. And you just think that's how mad's that. But then, like you say, it's like that. That you, you actually put a big smile on my face there because it's like you when we were at the Bennett's track day there. Shout out Bennett's. Um, <laughs> but you were there like on the Gen Three of your dad. That was a Gen Two that your dad's got, isn't it? You know what I mean. And then, like you say, when you compare against the Gen Three times against the Gen Four time and a Gen this, the times haven't changed that much, have they? In lap speeds, no. No, oh, not a great deal. You know what I mean? And it's like, there's me, with, like, not far from it. Like, I've got the, you know, what have I got? I've got the S compared to the M, and I'm like, oh, everyone's getting a fire blade. You know, part of me is getting, like, wound up, like, oh, everyone's on a faster bike. It's like, the bikes could, that, that S can still do the times. Mm. Well, you, you did, you, you at, know at the mean? North, Northwest, you did 199, didn't you, in the speed track? <laughs> exactly. The bike is not slow, mm. far from it. But then, look, like, the, the bike is capable what I'm getting credit for, so I'm definitely keeping one of my bike next year. <laughs> Unless someone turns up with a load of cheddar and just kind of say, "Oh, Dominic, we're desperate." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you never know. So um, I feel like we've totally gone t- off the path. No, no, it's, it's going, <laughs> going to um, this. You mentioned the Southern Hundred. Yes. So obviously, that was when you would have been there. Other the, the fact you were, get, you were getting your surgery. Yeah. Um, tape run, reduction. Run us through the uh, the results that I've said. I know Todd did fantastic, but Jesus wept. Um, well, I think like um, yeah, My- Michael got some wins on the Super Sports uh, a couple, and then Todd. Todd got one as well but I tell you what that 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 little 600 has got everything you know it's got trash control it's got blipper system it's got a miniature fire blade it is class but I tell you what no one else is getting them to go just that is just I can't remember which podcast we're doing but we're talking about like equivalent like um, comparing Clive Padgett is a flame sticker, you know what I mean? Adds 10 brake horsepower somewhere but like I say the Kawasaki of Dean Harrison he was absolutely chomping at the bit but so it was pretty much all three of them in the honours, wasn't it? So it was Todd, Harrison and Michael. Now, all three of them won five, um, super bikes in the big bike and then the uh, super sport. But like uh, Jamie Coward, he was taking it to them on the in the 600 class. And he's, you know, he's definitely, definitely delivering on that bike, massively delivering. But no, as far as the super sport, the, I tell you what, there was, some, I've got the photos. There was some, I can't not remember the race and I apologise for not remembering it, but there was a lad absolutely pissing away in the front, right? Chucked it at stadium. Stadium. Have you been? You have, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You know where stadium is? It's that that flat out king left. Not flat out, sorry. You, you hook a gear out and you go in. It's a double left apex. And then you go to the final cut turn at the right before the home straight. Right. That left there, a lad lost it there. He was all right, thank God. But the bike was just... You remember that Triumph Triple Challenge lad who mm. took it down... Um, Ash Beach. Yep, yeah, that's nothing. You know, Ash could watch that and go, and I feel actually a fair bit better here. Mm-hmm. This bike was obliterated. Absolutely obliterated. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a right slag here. I'm going to have a right slag off here. <laughs> if you listen to this, I hope he laughs about this. But he had a right whinge at people having a go at, um, you know, the GoFundMes. You know, like the GoFundMe pages. Yeah. The poor lad's obliterated his bike. He's looking for a little bit of help with the GoFundMe. See? Crashed or no 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 <laughs> had a like kind of a little bit of a dig saying oh you know if you if you're crashing a bike and you can't afford to repair it you shouldn't be racing strong fair comment fair enough but come on lad you know what I mean that the bike is in a million bits leave the lad alone if someone wants to help mm-hmm. for God's sake it's like people are like even on the boofy thing you know people have actually commented saying you know I'm not putting my problems on social media it's like well hold on if people want to help someone out. You know, Paul Boofy's had a, a life-changing industry. Uh, in, uh, sorry, injury. I think if someone wants to help him out, and that platform's there. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, so someone, someone privately messaged us actually having a go because we shared the link, which I just think is mad. But what, 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 what's wrong with people? You know what I mean? Mm. If people, you don't have to agree with everything, do you? You know what I mean? If you, if you want to make that comment, 
fair enough. But don't like tell someone off about trying to help someone else yeah. out. Just don't put if you don't want to help, don't help, but don't tell people not to help. Mm-hmm. Bell it. The world's mm-hmm. full of bell it. And so, I would know that because I'm the biggest bell yeah. go. So um <laughs> in terms of the biggest stories from Southern Hundred so the, yeah. the lap record got absolutely smashed by Todd and Harrison, I believe. Yes. They were like a second under the lap record. Uh, I think have just you got, from, have you got it in front of you now? No, just <laughs> from the news articles that um that I read at the time, like I think Todd was the won the most races that week or he was like the, the class most dominant the, yeah, force. Class, yeah. Classed as the man in the meeting. But uh, Dean Harrison won the senior or the he won one of the big races. Races, I think I don't. I think Todd won the the big big one. I think. Right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Harrison did win. Oh no, he won. Yeah, no, it was, it was it was fairly split. But you see, Harrison's never had it like a proper challenger. Like no, saying that Dunlop and them have always been mm-hmm. hammer and tongue. But Harrison's always been. He's never been pushed. And that's what I like about Harrison is you know his interviews. He was just like, oh no, it's you know we're, we're here we're racing. It's you know that. That club racer immediately came out to the front, you know, when Harrison was getting interviewed. It was absolutely class. Like, yeah, this is going, you know, we're out for a fight and it's it's good to see him getting challenged because Harrison, I believe, raised his game. Mm-hmm. It sounded like a, f- a brilliant meeting anyway if so all, all that was involved. And uh, Big and then- shout out to Manx Radio because obviously I'm sitting there with my eyes stitched shut and I couldn't physically, like, go watch anything. The way that I've never sat down, because obviously I've known being a part of it, actually listening to it, it was class. The way they painted the scene in the picture, it was brilliant. So all of them lot down at the Manx, the Blown Circuit, and even the Manx Radio in general, outstanding job. Mm-hmm. Outstanding that was fantastic. job. And then obviously a few weeks recovery, and then you've been straight over to Armoy. So yeah. it gives a run run down. What bikes did you take over, and which races did you compete in? Oh Jesus! So no, no, it was a case of um, no. I was about to say because I think we talked about a little bit, of it, but we're likely. Lee Jackson didn't we what, what the plan was so it was all very 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 last minute very last minute dot com so originally after the surgery I was going to get four weeks when my eyes stitched shut just for the health of it but the surgeon Dr Matthews was over the moon that it all went well so rang up Bill Kennedy and because there was a couple of injured riders um, I filled their spot so we turned up on the 600 of Fran Countens uh, I tell you what, well, Fran was going over anyway to help out Paul Marley and Toby and yeah so I just rang Fran and said can I take the bike and that's no problem and then meeting over there the Davies lads so they put Paul Jordan on one of the 500 classics and then me on the other but we that's a little bit weird so because it's a five it's a 500 they entered us into the open classic so we're against like the thousand cc's so it turned up went out and qualifying um i only made it a lap and then i think it shit a piston now it, it pushed back into the breather you know and it just like a bit of a two-stroke she, uh, seizure you know just going down the street and like, bah, just rolled it tried to feed it back on it went just pulled the clutch in just for the health of the engine so i only got one lap in but the thing about irish racing is yeah you don't have to do five laps per class it's each rider has to complete five laps in the day to to qualify so lucky for me on the 600 i got my five laps in in both the open and this um the super sport class so going in i only did one lap and i still qualified fourth paul was on for andy Hornby, who would be listening to this no doubt and um that they were up on the front which is brilliant uh, where do we go from there? Where do we go from there? So I went out, and that was the first time out on the 600 properly, and only got the five laps to qualify, and I think I qualified. When did I qualify? Where did I qualify? Where did I qualify? Six. Six, I believe, Um, because they do the split sessions, so they had the odd, the, the entry full, the entries were that full. It was mm-hmm. class, and um, having those two split, um, I went out with the odd class because I'm a little bit odd and uh, I led that which is brilliant and the good thing is at that time I'm I'm in a championship running with Michael Sweeney and I just out qualified Michael Sweeney and mind you I put the gum shield in because I could barely turn left and trying to get me literally my eye adjusted and mm-hmm. I've, I, to be honest within two laps that went out the window mm-hmm. just Big pile of adrenaline, and I was just back to how I was. Did I feel better than it did, say, the TT? So much better. Good. So, so much better. You know, like, you know, it's just the fact that I can shut my eye it is just, it just felt normal. Not mm-hmm. instead of thinking, you know, trying to work around it. It was just like, right, here we go. There's still, I still need two more surgeries on it. But the fact that I can blink and my vision's clearing so much more, I'm, I'm in a much better place, in a seriously much better place, which is good, like, leading on to the classic TT. But went from there, we qualified in the Open, we qualified 10th, so against the old boss, Crowey. <laughs> so I was at the back of the first wave, which was good crack. And then, yeah, 
unfortunately, we had absolutely outstanding weather for everyone. And then the heavens opened, absolutely pissed down. And there was a few red flags. And there was actually a big crash on the start line. One lad trying to make a return, clipped another lad. And I mean, you flat stick there on a super sport, absolutely flat stick. So were they okay? Yeah, they were okay, which is which is always good. Like, unfortunately, it's, it's that's the road racing element. You know, it's uh, when there's an accident, there's normally it's it's normally a big big yeah. accident kind of thing. But I tell you what, I, I kind of made some little little points. The most the most outstanding return. You know, obviously we'll talk about Mister Dunlop not uh, turning up, which was a bit of a highlight. But uh, Ryan Whitehall's return, Captain Insano. Oh, great! Because a year ago he chucked himself off the back jump. Mm-hmm. I mean, proper chucked himself off the back yeah, jump. Yeah, I've seen so, the video, yeah. so he came back and he was absolutely on the pipe again. So he, 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 no doubt you'll be listening to this and you'll appreciate the, the shout out. But it's nice to see that. It hasn't deterred them, and that's what the sport needs, you know, with just that that grit to keep going. But I tell you what, it's been it's been a weird old meeting. It's been a weird old meeting without Mister Michael Dunlop there, mm-hmm. and it's just that's it's. I'm going to say it how it is, in my opinion. It's a shame. It's a massive, massive shame because the sport is struggling as it is, without a doubt. You know, it's a very fragile thing, road racing. Mm. And unfortunately, Michael not turning up, it's it's damaging. It is damaging because uh, now I don't know what the reason is, but he's very much gone down the club route saying that the club haven't been fair to him. And you thinking, come on, man. This is very, very, very delicate times. Now, I've not been there. I've not known what the decision making was or what's been said between them. But the fact that was it to do with start money? I believe so. I haven't actually fully read into it, but it's a bit like, come on, you know, it's it was obviously a very difficult meeting with the Southern Hundred element. You know, there was like some really tight battles there, and for some reason he hasn't turned up, and he and for some reason it's gone very much on the club shoulders, and the club have done an outstanding job to get that meeting up and going. It was absolutely rammed pack. You know what I mean? The hillsides were full, and it was just a cracking meeting, and. Davey turning up, you know, on the Clyde Padger bikes, it was going to be, D- Davey's just on form, he's full of confidence, he's on the correct bikes. Do, how, do you know these sort of meetings, like, do, is it just, um, does it open up like any sort of meeting and anyone can put an entry in? Yeah. Or do they, does the club uh, pay expenses for like the top riders to come over to incentivise them or something? Well, I- that obviously that happens at like the TT in the northwest, you know, like even Scarborough. Oh, yeah, no, that, you know, that, no, 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 but like I think like I don't personally get any money, you know, I've never had that option kind of thing from Armoy, from Armoy, you know, yeah. and in the same breath, it's something that I've like to the um, all oh, right, presumably that if there's issues over start money, so some people are getting start money, yeah, that's it, you know what I mean. Okay. But at the end of the day, we need we need people at these events, now, we need we need we need a fan base at road racing, so for the club to have money to to, to um subsidize like the some of the riders do, do people pay to come and what like how do they get money into the club well that's that's the thing it's like it, people have to buy programs and obviously there's like a pass system you know the the club and pass, sponsors pass to get into the paddock no but it's just like they, they, the, the armoid club have done a clever thing like they've got grandstands they've actually spent a lot of money on putting a grandstand system up and people have to pay it's like it's public road racing and yes you can go and not pay but You'll, you'll be you'll be sad when it's gone. Mm. You know what I mean. And you know buying a program. And now don't get me wrong. It's it's twenty quid for a program. That's not cheap. Mm-hmm. That is far from cheap. But in the same breath, you, you need the prices need to be like that. You know, and if everyone people... bought a program, mm-hmm. it puts money back in the club. And it's like, it's not. And you need. But that's the thing. If you're going to pay the riders, you know, if you're going to pay like the Padgett team to turn up, you're going to pay Dunlop to turn up, you know, and it will be absolutely outstanding. The, the quality of riders there is just getting stronger. And is is the prize money at events like that? Yeah, so, like, each sponsor, like, so you got, like, the Mermaid Bar, you know, and, they, like, they they sponsor the Lightweight. For each race, yeah. For each rate, they put the, the prize money on. And is it, uh, do, is it, like, top three get paid or top no, five? top six. Top six, right. Top six, so, you know, it's like, you know, I think it, like, like six players gets, like, 50 quid. But, you know... What, what sort of money do you have for a win? Like, 350 quid. Right. So it's like, you know, people aren't going there to try and, you know... Mm. So you essentially, like... Pay, pay the mortgage off, you know, get if you If you win, you, like, cover one set of tyres. Yeah, of course you do. And, you know, right. at the end of the day, it's it's nice. You know, like, you lads, some, even if, like, Brit- you don't get prize money. Yeah. British. You know, when you win, next week, get it through. It's super bikes. You don't... In the support classes, you do. You do, yeah. Which is good. You know, it's that little d- dangle carrot, in it? You know what I mean? It's good. You know, we get a couple of beer money, a couple of beer tokens. But even going back to it, you know, yes, the clubs have to... They, they need the rock stars in. They do need the rock 
stars in because then that's going to attract bigger sponsors and get more money in mm. make the bigger event but like i say i don't know there's been a lot of hearsay you know and obviously something like Mike, michael has publicly announced that he's been treated unfairly and we are never going to find these answers out mm. this is something that is going to drift off into the ear like into the mist isn't it you know we are we are never going to know what truly happened it's going to be one story against another i guess what's difficult about stuff like that and this is speaking from someone that's like completely out of the that circle i literally know not i don't know anything about the how the ins and outs of how the club works or what but just from the outside it's really difficult to form an opinion when you don't know any of the facts, but that's so the same at the moment, at the, the moment you've just got you've got a Facebook status from one, a Facebook <laughs> status from the other, and it just leaves a big grey area for people to make presumptions and stuff. One hundred percent. It's um yeah, it's a shame. It's it's a massive shame, especially just as a fan of the sport, because you just want the best riders fighting for on track, and you want to see a spectacle, don't you? So whatever's happened, it's um it's a big shame, and hopefully it can be. Uh, put to bed and and um, I, resolved. I, I just, I really, 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 and I think everyone wants to see. It. I just, I, I just hope to be, to be very, very blunt. Michael is is a huge part of road racing. Mm. You know, the Dunlop hit, like you know what I mean. He, he's like he's p- island. You know, road, it's such a huge name, and we we'll want him back at Armoy. You know what I mean? One of all the road racers, and it's just like, but taking that, it, it cannot take away what David Todd's done at all from what he's done this weekend he's just been absolutely on the pipe but i tell you what even skipping that you know he, he won you know i think he won all his races that he was in but that first race in the wet my hat goes off to daryl tweed man of the meeting because it's like a wave system so it's obviously built off at a time so you got the first wave and the second wave daryl was on the lead of the second wave daryl and davy were trading places on the time board. So Davey was going pie in P1. I think I went off um I went off six, but I was like eighth in the first corner. And <laughs> what a this will make you laugh. So went off. And obviously Davey was must have been getting pit boards like P2, P1, P2, P1. I had no pit board whatsoever. So I went through like past Mike Brown, past Derek Shields, past Sweeney, past, and I'm just chomping through. And I caught Adam McLean, who was sitting second. I could see Davy in front, and I'm going, I'm third. You know what I mean? I'm going, I'm bloody third place here. So anyway, I've crossed the line thinking I'm in third place, having no idea what Daryl's been doing. Daryl got second place and moved Adam to third and me out the contention. So I crossed the line like the biggest bell end in the world going, I've just got third. You know what I mean? I'm waving at everyone like an absolute bell end, like gets in. And obviously they've got the winner's enclosure on the side. Did you pull in? Mate, you have no idea how close I was to put, mate. Like uh, I pulled in and I saw the Wilson Craig lads. And lucky for me, Daryl just came in behind. Imagine if I pulled in. Oh, God. <laughs> like standing there going, Dominic, you're going to you're gonna have to back up uh, both your bike and your dreams. You're going to have to just back them up. So mm. I tell you what, fair, fair play to you. Four still uh, extremely good. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, Must was, have been happy with that. Oh, no, it was over the moon. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, it was just class, like, chipping away. The good thing is that the the the, 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 li- the little bit that we, we lacked on the top end, you know, and the speed-wise, you know, the wet, the wet's a good level. It brings everyone down. But outstanding result for Daryl Tweed. You know mm. what I mean? I am absolutely over the bloody moon for him and he, he nearly put an, he nearly put an end to Davy's dominance you know what I mean that is so and, so close uh, did you say Davy won every race he was in broke um, lap record yeah so he absolutely yeah so that like that so he's on fire at the moment isn't he he is he's on form and the good thing is about Armoy is I can see why he, um, he, he must have pressurised a fair bit in the Clive Padgett to go in but I tell you what what in what a welcome the Clyde Padgett got into the paddock. You know, he's one of the biggest names in racing, you know, GP down to everything, you know, the history that team have. To have them in an Irish paddock is massive. Mm. Is massive. You know what I mean? So it, now we just need to get the, the Lee Johnsons in, the Hickmans in. Imagine them at that meeting. Like Guy Martin was there on the MV and on his classic 600. You know what I mean? Had Ian Locker. Was Guy Martin there this weekend? Guy Martin was racing this weekend. Plinked. You know what I mean? His MV unfortunately packed in, which was a damn shame. And, um, so what even I got to spin out on the 250 class because like Dan Sale like um he didn't turn up so like John Chapman said oh could you ride me back I put it on Paul but obviously the first race was piss and wet and I'm like right we've got some wet John didn't have any spare wheels so I'm sitting out oh, like I missed my opportunity to get like the race win this weekend mm-hmm. which would have been a damn sh- like yeah, it would have been great to get mm-hmm. how, did, like, how did Guy get on 
No, um, unfortunately, the MV packed in on him, but um, I can't remember where he finished in the classic superbike race. He was on a big Suzuki as well. So, Crowe got second. Second. Uh, Jamie won it. And who was third? Who was third? Local lad, man. Oh, I've seen Davey. I've seen the pictures. Um, oh, Davey Bell. Davey Bell, local oh, lad. There you are. So shout out oh. to Davey Bell. He's like, he, he's, he is down on the ponies, but he, he drove it home, which is class. He got class, that. Mind you, that super twin race at Armoy was outstanding. We, if there's footage. You shouldn't take the super twin. No, no, ours was still bust, unfortunately. Uh, but, mate, it was Sweeney, Paul Jordan, and Jamie Coward. That it was like a photo line finish. All three of them came over the line. There is cracking footage on the Armoy page of that. Absolutely class. <laughs> Who won? <laughs> Jamie. Ja- I mean, by a... Mi- Whoa, just, I mean, just, it was class, man. That's proper racing, that. That is mm. proper racing. In terms of uh, the road race and all the main sort of riders, is there any sort of movements going on or rumours of, like, who who's going where or is it a bit early for that? I, I don't know. I don't know. There's not there's nothing really been much said, but obviously, you know, like Adam McLean, you know, he he's, he went on his own 600 this year, so Adam mm. McLean's kind of a, a bit of a question mark, really, as far as road racing is concerned, because it... He should get picked up, you know what I mean? So I can't imagine Paul Jordan moving from Prez. He seems happy there. Mind you, his R1 went bang, like in a big, big, big way on the star line. Just poured oil all over the track. He ruined everyone's fun. Cheers, Paul. <laughs> um, no, who else is moving? I, don't, I can't see Jamie moving. Jamie's in a really comfy spot. They're going to, you know, they're talking about giving him some new bikes, which is fantastic. Um, no, don't really know. But there's not really... A lot going on there. I think it's it tends to be later, you know, into the year. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know. Do not. Good question. Good, really good question. But I have no idea on that side of things. No yeah, idea. So, but but even like going back, it's like I can't even see. I can't see Davy moving. Davy deserves like. Well, what does Davy deserve? You know, of course he deserves a factory seat, but mm-hmm. he's on form. He's feeling it, and I think like that track properly suited him. I think that lap speed will be hard to beat, but Dunlop, I think. If anyone's going to beat that lap speed, it is done not. Mm-hmm. And let's let it, that. Oh God, I, think, I really hope. I hope. I hope it happens because it would be a proper fair fight. Them two, it would be a I really fair. Fight. I think Dave is in a really good, good position to negotiate like a really yes. good deal to do because obviously we would like to do super bikes and the road racing. Yeah, and obviously he's like the one of the sort of biggest if not the biggest rising star in the sort of road racing Massively, world. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's got a realistic, realistic chance to be sort of the next big sort of star of road racing. Yeah. Um, I think it, it, whether it's this, this next year coming or the year after, but I do think at some point you'll, you'll take a Takeman. Um, but hmm. we'll, we'll just have to see. I think he's in a great position with the Padgett's team. Don't think I don't think any move would would be a benefit in terms of like I don't think there's a better ride out there for him. Yeah, know but, what I mean. And to be fair, whether he was doing British super bikes or doing super stock, he's still riding at an incredibly high level, like sort of improving his skills. So I, I, he's in a great position where he is now. It's difficult. It's a difficult one. Um, if if you were in his position, imagine if like say a team that wasn't quite as good. We're willing to pay him a good amount of money to switch. For me, he, if, if I was in his position, I'd kind yeah. of want to be on the best bike and try and. Yes. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. But then again, at some point, you've got to start. You've got to start making good money and and setting yourself up. So I don't know where 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 or what you'll end up doing. Uh, but I definitely think he's he's on a massive roll. We've talked about like being on a wave before. Yeah. And he's he's currently riding the crest of a wave, and he kind of it's he really just needs to keep keep surfing that wave, doesn't he? Because he's he's um, smashing it at the moment. To be fair. But uh, completely agree with you. No, you've just got me thinking. Sorry, I'm just thinking about like you know moves, counter moves. Mm-hmm. It's a bit like I'm trying to think. I can't see James hit. I can't like OMG lot. You know if they make a return, you know James is like comfy there. Mm. Lee Don't... Lee Hardy's a bit of a question because Lee Hardy normally has a road presence. Yeah, he's he's been missing from all the roads this year, hasn't he? He has, and you think, well, what's going to happen with Leon? You know, mm. is he going to make a return? You know, is he going to get a dip? I don't know. Can you see Leon staying? I, in British, I don't know. You, I don't know that so far they've had quite a disappointing season. I, I think everyone would agree. Um, but yeah, I've got no idea. So, like, like you say, that's that's one team that could potentially make a return in. That's like kind of a, a question mark and the, the seat element on that. Um, 
Tass, really, isn't it? Because obviously, Dun, you know, Dunlop's be like, you see, Dunlop, it's Dunlop's a very clever, very, very clever man. You know, he's got his own fantastic 600, own fantastic stocker, but like, the superbike element's always a, a question mark for Michael, you know what I mean? And he's, he's, he can, he can definitely deliver, mm-hmm. definitely deliver. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes. Mm-hmm. It'll be really interesting to see where he goes. But no, as far as that, there's no standouts. Really, it's quite this quite boring. Really, you know yeah. what I mean. It's quite boring. There's no opportune moments to go. Mm. But, and in terms of uh, what's next for you, have you got any other road racing lined up? So, um, no. So it's the classic TT next. Right. So that clashes with the cad ball. Mm. Clashes with August, the cad ball. So, yeah. yeah. So. And what you're taking over to the classic TT? So I'm on John Chapman's two fifty. GP bike, um, which is I'm really looking forward to. It. Actually, I haven't released the numbers on that yet, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know when that's going to happen. Be interesting when it does. But also got a classic um, F1 ride, and uh, for Bob Henderson, that, that's what I was actually playing on down at uh, Bennett's, yeah. uh, the Bennett's track day there, and it's an absolutely cracking bike. And Classic. like the good thing about Bob is he doesn't mess about, doesn't cut corners, mm. so it's a bit like want to change this, want to change that, and he's really, he's really got his teeth sunk into, which is fantastic. And um, on with the Davies Motorsport Yamaha five hundred. I tell you what, though, this will make you laugh. Um, I was actually leading, leading the race in the open. Um, I started from fourth, went off. Got in front, you know, starting to pull a gap, you know, got the fastest lap of the race. Gear lever fell off. Third lap in of a six lap race. I was absolutely gutted. And I thought, you know, what's Chrissy going to say if I pull in and be a tart here? So I literally rode the entire race and I've got a photo. I said, I'll give it a grace and she could put it on. But there's a photo of me. I'm hand shifting. So I was literally moving my leg out the way, going up the straight, with my head to the side, and just changing by hand, like, bah, 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 literally doing the whole thing. And like going down the box, I was having to like take my foot forward and like heel back change. And I was missing all the time because the exhaust is so close to the foot peg. Yeah. And I was just like missing gears and like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Absolutely. Still finished third. Wow. <laughs> and, the, and the importers went flying fastest at that point because I lost all, like, some crack though, you know what I mean? But, but that is the best thing about Armoy is the fans go nuts for it. You know what I mean? And that, that like and that, that was my point prior to this. You know what I mean? It's such a fragile thing that, you know, a handful of people can change the potential future of this sport. You know what I mean? It's in it, it's just it's difficult because it is a fragile thing. And one day it might go. My God, I hope it doesn't. But mm-hmm. it, we just we all need to just keep this sport going because like riding through there, all the fans absolutely go nuts for it there's not a single person like Glenn Irwin was down actually there he was watching like we even saw Paul Phillips going around the paddock you know from the TT he took his family over had a great time and you're thinking this is good man it's like our Moy is only getting better and the better the riders and everything you know what I mean and it's just it's class like there's like, even going back to like the Jamie Coward comment like Jamie doesn't really like jumps, but he really suited that. And that's why, like, that that kind of riding suits Davy style, you know, with the Supermoto, you know, constantly airborne, some absolutely awesome photos kicking around the place. Mm-hmm. But you'll have to come to the event, Mike. Yeah, you'll have to come I, to the event. I'd Keep an eye on Piggy, because the lad was a nightmare. He's just running around, making friends, just telling shitty jokes. You know, he's, yeah, he's he uncontrollable. Sent, <laughs> he sent me a joke before, actually. I haven't had a chance to listen to everybody. He sent us one on uh, WhatsApp right there. Um... Mind you, oh, yeah. Big, big shout out to Matt Stevenson. Go on. The rolling mullet. Mm-hmm. Food poison. Hospitalised. Wow. What the weekend? Shit, they not. Jesus. All oh, my team. Literally, I tell you what, right? This is going. This is a shock. I'm a changed man, Chrissy. You've changed me, right? Everyone. Fran, <laughs> Jamie, Toby, Paul, Sarah, John, like uh, John, not John. Big John. He doesn't get. He doesn't get ill. Every one of us. Every one of them. Sorry, had food poisoning. Every single one of them. All in the same restaurant and that, and loads of people were just dropping down. Like Paul, God love him, he absolutely just chucked his ring up at like all day, still got up and got on the bike just to qualify and stuff like that. Absolute hero of a fella, but it floored him. Like Fran wasn't feeling too clever. But Matt Stevens got hospitalized. Bloody hell. You know what I mean? Are you gonna name and shame the <laughs> No, no, very <laughs> tempting, very yeah. tempting, but you know what I mean? So anyway, we're all in there having a few pints and like, you know, having like but this is why I'm a changed man, Chrissy. We all had one mains. I'm the only one who didn't have a dessert. Very good. I was literally watching the. Is this ma- for the classic DT? Mate, I, no, no. I was literally looking at the entry list, going, "That dessert might knock a second off the air. I'm, I'm not going near it." But thank God I didn't. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it was something like I, like I, I, I tell you what, the amount of the day, I didn't realize how dangerous ice cream was. You know what I mean? Like salmonella, and obviously it's a dairy product. And how? Is that co- where it was from? 
Well, that's what we're assuming because I'm the only one who didn't have it. We'll have to ask Matt Stevenson. Mm. I'm the only one who didn't have that. Me and Big John were the only ones who didn't have ice cream. And that's what made everyone bad. Everyone in that yes. team were they were wrote off. That's epic. Absolutely wrote off. Piggy sent us this voice note. And on and some random but did they get you hundred quid? Oh fuck. There was some bloke, right, went up to Piggy in the bar mm-hmm. and gave him two hundred quid. Kid you not. He said a hundred to you and a hundred to me. Well, I'm seeing Piggy later on I'll today, so you, I'll you. remind him. Yeah, I'd be straight Plus. away, I'd be like, hey, Dom's mentioned 100, like, 100 quid. <laughs> and to whoever gave him the 100 I, quid he, to pass on, thanks very thank much. Thank you, so, obviously, a, you know, a fan of the show, so thank you so, so much for that. That is right. absolutely class. Piggy so. sent us this just before, so. I've uh, just got back from Armoy. Anyway, when I was coming back on plane, I sat down and this bloke come and sat next to me. And he'd got a right scuffy old dog. It was a right thing. It was a right tatty old lead on it. I says, I come with what you want plane with that. Ah, he says, what it is? He says, I'm undercover. He says, it's a sniffer dog. I says, sniffer dog? I said, get away. No, no, he says, watch this. So he sends the dog down plane, goes up to this bloke, sniffs around him, comes back up, puts his left paw up onto his knee. He says, that means he's got heroin. He says, get away. I said, you're having me on. He says, no, I'm sure you're going. Sent dog off again, runs around, sniffs around this bloke, comes back up, right paw up onto his knee. He says, that means he's got cocaine. Oh, yeah. I said, I can't believe this. It's a lot. I'll show you once more. So dog runs off again, comes back, jumps up onto his knee, and it shits, and it shits all over me, like, both covered in shit. I says, Jesus Christ. I says, what's that mean? It means he's got a bomb. <laughs> Piggy, uh, but um, I'm actually as soon as we finish this podcast, I'm uh, down to <laughs> heading down to catch, have a catch up with Piggy. We've got a few things to sort out, and then we'll be um, from then. I, I'm away at work, and then straight to Thruxton the following weekend. So how's work going? Your, your BSC is selling nightmare. Yeah, good. So um, for those that don't know, my my new job, I'm working down in Coventry for Lucas Distribution, and uh, basically the BSA Gold Stars coming back to it. It's going to be going all around the world but it's actually starting in the uk so the first bike sales are coming here and uh, lucas distribution the company i work for is the the distributors so um yeah the bikes are the first uh batch of bikes are coming in soon and then obviously we get them out to the dealer network and stuff and people are pre you can actually pre-order them so there's it's been unbelievably popular um just not off the phone taking deposits all the time so uh, really looking forward to to your uh, commission <laughs> You're, you're, no. Don't lie to us, Chris. No, you no, happy no. family on chasing no, no, the race. No, no. But yeah, uh, yeah it, it's bit good, good, but busy. I tell you what, we've got a problem here because obviously, um, do you want to give a shout out to the new logo? Well, yes, I'm literally looking at the new look. The, the logo is here, going. I know, Jesus just Christ, had a, something and uh-oh. just uh, done a little bit of rebranding. So it was actually so a previous guest son, so Sean Muir's son, Lewis, uh, Lewis Muir Promotions, have, has said. Uh, Done us, drew us up a new logo. So um, yeah, that the the original logo I had was just a like a standard motorbike. It's actually used for a few of the logos. It's not like particularly ours. So we've had a, a, a one like drawn just for us. So yeah, it's um, we've had loads of like positive feedback. I think it's a little bit nicer than our old one. So yeah, the it's only a lot person, more refined. The only person I feel sorry for is Shirley because she's got the old one tattooed on her. So I don't know. If, oh, I don't God. know if she can get that uh, tattoo removed. <laughs> or maybe it's we're gonna have to sponsor it. To be fair, it's just it's it's a mark of the times, isn't it? She's got the original logo tattooed, so she can maybe get the new one on out of the ankle or something. Class. <laughs> but, um, Class. Anyway, so in terms of bike racing. Uh, as well as you over at Armai, there has been World Superbikes this weekend. Yes. And the, I mean, the top three in the championship, uh, as in a uh, top rack, Baut- top rack Bautista and Jonathan Ray are just um, every weekend, the, the, they're the three. The massively the, the cream of the crop. Um, doesn't matter where they go, what track, what conditions, them three always seem to be at it. Scott Redden got his first podium of, I, th- I think, is that the first podium he's had this year? Jonathan. He was, did he get on a Donington? Yeah, know. yeah, in the sprint race. Oh, did he? Oh, sorry. So he he got another podium. Then they've got a Moffs. different. They've got a different um, chassis in the uh, chassis. They've got a different swing and arm. arm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I heard about that, and yeah. So he had a good good race. I think it was the first race. He he came third, just beat uh, Jonathan, and he then the rest of the time riding that thing, mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And after about Easton and Jonathan got a good jump in the championship, and then uh, Top Rack was quite far behind, but he's he's won something like six of the last eight races, mm. and he's right back in the chase. So yeah, it's it's hotting up, and for. 
for bike fans, you know, if you've got a choice of watching sort of BSB, MotoGP and World Superbikes, I think, to be honest, I think World Superbikes this year has been really, really good. Um, and f- yeah, it's uh, it's a great championship. So if you don't follow it, maybe uh, maybe give it a go and I think you'll, you'll really enjoy it. Um, in terms of, obviously, the next round of the BSB will be out. Once this podcast goes out, that'll be out next week. So we're down to Thruxton, which is the fastest fastest track, the short circuit that uh, BSB go to. It's really, it's down near um, Andover, near Salisbury, where the the Russian agent attack was a few years ago. And a beautiful, fast track. Um, but it's a bit of an odd one because the only time... As BSB races, the only time you get to ride there is at BSB. There's no testing, there's no track days, there's no club race, no anything, just BSB. So That's it's, good, that. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a funny meeting and it often comes down. It's the most important place for bike setup. It's so, so critical to like look after your tyre and um, like pretty much anyone could lead on the first lap if they wanted to but then you you can just smoke your tyre so it's like it's a really difficult one to put to and obviously you can't practice away from it so you can't like get set up you have to be really clever during free practice to kind of get a good setup and whatever I don't mean to put the shits in your competition, but you literally rode around uh, Cadwell for five sessions on essentially a rim. So you, you've got a lot of practice on. <laughs> Do you you've know, and, lot- and that is actually, <laughs> so on the track day on Wednesday, obviously me and Dom were down coaching for the, the Bennett's thing on uh, at, at Cadwell. And I, I did take my BSB bike just, in, just to get a few laps on basically, but I didn't take any spare wheels or anything. I just left the bike exactly how it finished at Brands Hatch BSB. So we used the X tyre, which the X rear tyre was actually developed as a qualifying tyre, like a super soft tyre sort of thing. It's the softest tyre that we can run. And then like since the last few years, people have started using using them for full race distances. I, I did a full race distance at Brands on it. And then I did four or five sessions at Cadwell and it was still, it was still, obviously it was spinning up and stuff, but it was, it I was still mint. lapping and I was lapping like not a bad pace as well. So it's um yeah it just goes to show you can get a bit more out of them than what you think it's interesting how you know your prior point like how bikes have changed tires have changed and times haven't people are breaking that record so don't get me wrong but they're not it you know with all this money and development you think it'd be a second every year mm. wouldn't you you know what i mean mm. incredible yeah. incredible yeah it's it, it is um yeah it is a, a bit of an odd one in it and it, it just is. goes to show, like, with all the developments and all the things, Coops comes out on a, I think it was this 2019 bike. Yeah. Which the Suzuki got developed, like, 2018 or something. Hasn't got any of the sort of fancy electronics or anything on it, and it, he goes out there and wins. So it just goes to show, like, the the, <laughs> the right rider, well-set-up bike, can can win on anything, basically. Speaking of Coops, he was on that Kramer of Eddie Roberts's bike, wasn't he? Did you um, see that? Where was oh, yes, yeah, yes, he was, Campbell, yeah. yeah. So mm. was he going to be? I wonder. If, I wonder what that's all about. Doing I don't think bit, doing a bit of testing. A bit of testing for for what? Mm, I wonder what's sure. well. You know, it's uh, be interesting to see if he turns up in anything. Yeah, because obviously your round clashes with our round, doesn't it? So there we go. Yeah. Oh, but see, I'm a changed man because I'm making notes. I've got to make another shout out to our um, our favourite hotel, Brian Kennedy, who is a uh, a religious watcher of chasing the racing now, because. Um, <laughs> one of my sponsors Roy Armstrong was going to come to our moor because it was all last minute and we we're going to stay in his motorhome mm. and like, um, I thought right mid thing packed in didn't it so I rang Brian and De- Chris Kennedy Death of Glory tattoos uh, <laughs> so is there any, any chance I could uh, use your bed like uh, use your spare bedroom so he, I think he just curses our name to be fair because every time we're in Northern Island we end up oh, picking, uh, oh, class. Uh, you'll end up putting an invoice to us I'm guaranteeing yeah, it enough. rightly so rightly so would you, would you mind just chucking us a drink please oh Oh, good lad. Which what? White or black? White, please. Right, on the white. Do you want to grab a black one? Well, hey, obviously um, you. <laughs> obviously, Rich Energy's been quite sort of in the press. Of, You're of not late. kidding, is it? And um, <laughs> do you want to um, don't I mean, drag me in? <laughs> well, it's it, <laughs> affected. It, just well. in, in, just for. I mean, I'm prob- I'm as confused as uh, m- most people about the whole thing. But um, just to kind of from. From what I've kind of read, John Hogan's done an interview with both William Story and Alan Gardner. And, and that's if the you... Norton fella, isn't it? Is that right? No. Who's, Who's the this? guy who did the Norton interview? Oh, yeah, John Hogan did. Yeah, yeah that's the guy. So and it's so a fella. Yeah. It's a really long um, 
interviews with both. So I'd say that's probably, if you want to clarify the situation, that's, that's probably the best thing. But just to explain, our link with Rich Energy is through Alan Gardner, who yes. is the um, it, who's the distributor of yes. Rich Energy. So in terms of... This one's for you, Alan. When you see William Story... There it is. <laughs> when you see William Story, who speaks on behalf of Rich Energy and who controls the Rich Energy accounts, we don't have any sort of link with Williams. We've never like, uh, we, we don't get these. Yeah, he's been on the podcast, but we, uh, the the cans come from the distributor, yes. which is Alan Gardner, who also spot uh, like you're an, so when you're a rich energy ambassador, that's not through William Story. That's, that's through that's Alan. Alan Gardner, they same are. as the race team and stuff. So it's, um it it, it is, it ah. is a little bit confusing that everything that's going on. I text Alan when it all happened. And I said, what's going on? You just, you just said, don't worry about it. That was, that, that's all I got. It was a response. Yeah. Like, hey, this is me not worrying about it. Happy yeah. days. And in terms of, in, people can say what they want and I can see the frustration, especially with, uh, like say what William Story put on things and like it, it's um, people can jump to conclusions about the brand and stuff but at the end of the day in a position which where both sort of privateer by grace privateer races and obviously um, doing the podcast and stuff you can say what you want but the fact that th- through Alan Gardner uh, the the rich energy things uh, massively helping a lot of people in the sport giving yeah. people opportunities has been a big help to big help to yourself um so yeah you can say what you want but the <laughs> we, need, we need to keep like, the thing is people people tear apart because it's easy to tear someone down rather we need to keep teams in the paddock yeah i think this this whole pod is about trying to build and when you build when, racing up and i think it's so easy to tear things apart but yeah. no when, fucking reason when you look at say um red bull which is austrian and you think the people People are drinking that can all around the world. People are drinking that drink, and there's so much money then gets reinvested. They've got they've got a track. They've got a KTM. The link with KTM. They've they put so much back into the sport. So um, obviously, if there's if there is some like a British equivalent that can uh, do similar sort of things for us, then uh, I'm I'm all behind it. And like you say, it's. Uh, what they're doing with the OMG racing team this year is absolutely phenomenal. They've got a chance, a good chance of uh, challenging for the championship this year and winning the British Superbike Championship. So, um, yeah, for, it's but just to try and clear that up, it's not it's not through William Story. It's through uh, our our sort of connection is through Alan Gardner. There we are. So, uh, <laughs> um, we've got a lot of Patreon questions. Yeah, uh, do you want to, first one, Tony Rolls. Whoa, 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 whoa! Before before we go down the Patreon element, uh, what's this motion films? Carry on. I've just, I've just clicked on the face tube this morning, and it, like, there's another documentary about Chrissy Rapp. Yeah, you're more famous than the Beatles. You, so <laughs> what's going on? No, um, so Motion Focus Media just dropped us a message and just said uh, they were filming at Rower the other day when Rower, you were there. Flid fest. What a laugh! I owe two massive. Uh, <laughs> Chris, uh, Christian Bjorn, I owe them two massive apologies. I'm not going to discuss why. Right. That's Flidfest. And basically, <laughs> I, I wasn't um, I wasn't entirely sure what it was all about, but uh, I received a message saying, to, uh, will you do some filming and do like a, a what's your story thing? Yeah. And um, it looked, the production looked really good. So uh, yeah, I invited them. I was only home one day, like pretty much all this month. So I've inv- I invited them up and uh, I had a day, just kind of a little bit of an interview. Um it was funny, sort of went <laughs> went back to the house that I grew up in, and like sort of showed them around, and uh, just it, it, it's something a little bit different, and it's it's it'll be out on YouTube, Motion Focus Media, if you want to check it out, it'll be out sometime soon, and uh, if if you enjoy it, great. If you don't, then don't watch it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I enjoyed doing it. It was good. Right. Um, Class. First question, Tony Rolls. Yeah. Hello, do you Tony. think do you think PBM will stay next year? Good question. Um, in term, obviously, PBM have done everything in British Superbikes. They dominated the championship for a long time. The link, especially with Shaky, but then obviously later with Josh Brooks and with Scott Redden, they've had so much success. They've, they've been they've been a more GP team. They've been world they've been a World Superbikes. Paul Bird's done pretty much everything in on two wheels. So it's not like it's not like there's an something that he's like having to prove or trying to yeah. things he's done it i think if um if paul enjoys running the race team and trying going for another championship then i'm sure he'll decide to carry on but obviously he has also got uh, his son frank that's doing really well with the car racing and 
if it, things might be, you know, you might want fancy going on to that. So I've no. got no idea, uh, but whatever whatever the case is, he's f- he's put so much uh, support and help into the into the paddock for for years. He's given so many people, like say Stuart Easton, would never have even raced bikes on tarmac if it wasn't for Paul. And um, even for for myself this year, he's been a no people don't really know this, but behind the scenes, Paul's um, helping me out this year. So um, he's. He doesn't often like sort of shout about all the stuff he, that he's doing, but um, he's um, yeah, he's, he's very very kind bloke. And um, if he if he does stay, and I hope he does all he, he does he's, well. He's and not... if he wants to pull out, then it is choice. I was about to say, there's no there's no signs of it. Like, oh, let, let's be blunt about it, you know what I mean. Is his lads aren't at the front of the championship, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, but there's no signs that I can see. You know, there's been no interviews, no. It's me last year. Correct me if I'm wrong. On the, pod, actually, on the be, podcast with us, he said he, he did say hit, it was yeah. it was twilight years, sort of insinuating that he he he's not going to be doing it for much longer. But obviously, he, he'll be having a very disappointing season this year with Sykes and Brooksy. Sykesy, um, ha, you know, hasn't troubled the podium yet. Which coming back from World Superbikes and as a ex World Champion, you, you would expect him to be. Yes. Uh, but for, for whatever reason, he just hasn't managed to click with the bike. And also Brooksy, who's an ex champion on that bike, is just struggling, uh, just struggling to to be on the podium and yeah. challenge the challenge the Yamahas and some, often the efforts of Kawasaki as well. So, but when, like Brooksy, Brooksy actually had two. I think he had two crashes of brands as well, which is so unusual because you. Know, whether he's Brooksy, is, yeah. whether he's winning or not, he always sort of gets the or he, he gets to his level, and he's like he very rarely throws it up the road. So at, obviously, it's not for a lack of trying. He's not just tootling around in like sixth no. or seventh and happy with that. He's pushing on and trying trying to get the results. But for whatever reason, he just can't unlock unlock the bike to do it. So yeah, yeah. But, but like I say, there's no from a public persona or social media persona whatsoever that. It is there last year. You, yeah, you know what knows? I mean? Who knows? But it'll be... Nah, it'll but be, like, like you say, Tony, it'll be interesting to see... Well, you know... It'll be a the championship if, if they do pull it'll be up. a massive, probably. massive gap in it. Um, Tony Rolls, thoughts on Padgett's alleged fuel irregularities at the 700 and MD protester are oh my... What, what is it about... What's, what's been... Because I didn't actually see this, but someone privately messages and said there was... Um, Lee Johnson, Dean Harrison, and Michael Dunlop all insinuated that Padgett's were running illegal fuel at the Seven Hundred. Now what's, I can't. What's the story? Well, I don't. I don't know what the story is on that. It's a base. I, you know what? <laughs> Every time you sign up for a rates entry, it should be like you've read the regs and ter- you know the terms and so. I, I actually need to do my homework on this because I don't know what the regs are as far as race fuel. It's because there's no, there's no control, control fuel, fuel like there is at BSB, so you can run whatever you want. Yeah. Well, so, no, no, so, but yeah, and, uh, saying that I haven't, we need to pull up the regs for the next show, you know what I mean? To actually pull it right. out. But you're 100% right, you know, you can you can run race fuel. You can. You can. Oh, yeah, you can run race oh, fuel. So, like, I run out the pump stuff. So, so the. So. The, now, all that, now, but the, to make statements like that, you know, you know what I mean about like different illegal fuels. There's mm-hmm. obviously a limit on fuel. Is there? And, well, no, the, I, that's what I'm saying. I have actually not read that. <laughs> I should have read the regs, but obviously not being at the Southern, I don't know what you can run and what you can't run. But um, it's not like they're putting red diesel in it, you know. Yeah. But it's you know it's an advantage gained if you're not allowed to run it. I'm not sure, but to, there's obviously there's got to be a limit mm. to make a statement like that. There's got to be an octane limit or something. Right. Okay. I don't know. Is that not a fair comment? I don't, yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah, so I think we'll have to come back to you on that one. Maybe have, we'll have to get but Mr. It, Clive on the podcast and ask him. Himself. I would love... It would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, get, I'd, it would I'd be, love to oh, get Clive on. My from, no, from, but, from the beginning of the podcast, there's a few people that have always... Like, we'll get people messaging up, saying about Gwintoli. We'll really want to get Gwintoli yes. on at some point. Clive Padgett's another one like that. I'd absolutely love to get Ma- him on. Michael Dunlop would be another one to get on. It'd be absolutely outstanding. Uh, Kenny, Galaxy or Dairy Milk Chocolate? <laughs> I don't know if that's a euphemism <laughs> or it's, it's things. No, say that again. Say that list. Galaxy Chocolate or Dairy bars. Milk. Yeah. Dairy Milk. Dairy Which milk. one would you prefer? I think I'd You're an athlete. Galaxy, it'd be fair. You reckon? Mike Orton. Whoa, 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 whoa. You think you know a guy? Hold on. What, what's going <laughs> Now I'm joking. <laughs> Mike Orton. Are my thoughts, Dom? What was behind Michael's protest? We kind of went through that. Injury and surgery update on Dom, please. We know you don't like talking about yourself, but hey, that's the price of popularity and success. The, uh, <laughs> that would the be infamous. AHB Senior Supersport Championship Prize Fund. Can we get the winner on as a guest? 
if Great he's idea. running it again next year, maybe a bit of publicity. So is the Hardy Breed Senior Support Championship still running? What's yeah, the it's still be running. That? Yeah, yeah. No, he's there at every round. So it's like there's do, only one. Do people put money into that? Yeah, I think, I think but Hardy Breed's put some money in. There's like a little proud like but Hardy Breed is like he's he's is he's such a well fed system, you know, he's so quick on the socials. You know what I mean? Like red flags up to date. If you don't follow him, it is definitely worth following. And uh, so how is he financing so basically he's he's got a private race fund that whoever wins the that championship yeah. gets the money fair enough I right? think I, I, I could not agree more I think that is a great idea to get him on as a guest and we, mind you we do not cover travel expenses <laughs> yeah. not. If, you, if, if you win it son get yourself yeah. a burn at field we'll have you on not a problem we yeah. even kind of rich energy in <laughs> Uh, Wayne Sherwood, Chris's career change from teacher to working for BSA. Your thoughts and reasons on the change. 2023 <laughs> plans. Continue with your own team. Have you approached any teams or have have you approached you? Have they approached you? Dom's bike repair update. So first of all, mm. uh, the, the career change from teaching uh, to working for BSA. So the, the lots of reasons. Um, you can shout at your colleagues now. Yeah, one of <laughs> one of them is um, the the teaching th- the teaching thing. It was I think it was a, a good um, good thing for us to do, and like I enjoyed doing it. But uh, it, some there was some things that, um, like for example, this year with kind of running the and being involved in running the team. I, I've got to be getting to the race on a Wednesday to to get set up, and it would be unfair. To, it would be unfair to get like my vol- like ask volunteers to come and help set up if I'm not there myself. And it just in terms of flexibility with with work and stuff, um, it's um yeah, just works a lot better for me. So it's just personal reasons I would say, and um yeah, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing. Um, twenty twenty three plans. Uh, so I'd love to. I'm loving what I'm doing this year in the in racing in the BSB it's been a pipe dream for myself to compete in the championship and uh, all my life I've kind of worked up to it so I'm, I'm really really th- enjoying myself um, well I say enjoying myself I'm pleased to be doing it I, f- I, f- I feel like it's a big big sort of um, I feel very sort of purposeful and putting all of my time and effort and uh, yeah sure. I, I, yeah I, exactly <laughs> I, I am enjoying it in terms of next year I've um, I've not been approached and I haven't approached other people um obviously I've got I've, it, I've got a fantastic group of people around us and I've really really enjoyed what I'm doing and I love um I love being the kind of I don't yeah this year I, I'm loving what I'm doing um in terms of next year if I've kind of got two options really one of them is if I can attract a good sponsor to and kind of run run our own team again uh, with the same sort of setup, but with a sort of financial backing, that is one option. Uh, and then obviously there is another option of getting a, a, a ride with like an established team. Um, like I say, I haven't been approached by anyone. I haven't went looking for for that yet. I think it's quite early on in the season. However, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll just have to see see what what happens. Um, but you you are like it's like any job you're you're approachable. You know, any anyone's for for sale essentially. Anyone can have a chat. Is that a fair comment? Yeah, it's, it's a, I mean, it's a funny, make, make, it's, it's, it's a funny it's, business, the whole racing thing, because every, it's every, every, so most most people are on like sort of like a one year like a one year roller it's contract. It's the most fickle game going. Very and um, <laughs> yeah, so it it'll just have to see what what tends to happen in bike racing is the top teams gets all score get sorted and everyone else is on hold because everyone's waiting out for the and once the top rides start getting filled out that's when every one thing falls into place um when does that normally happen someone's telling me like july time kind of thing. i'm not too sure we've it's talked about, it, we've talked about this before where some some riders have managers that from like uh, even now in the season they'll be going around and kind of having meetings and grace stuff. is our manager yeah <laughs> um, speak to grace I've, yeah i've always kind of done stuff uh, done stuff myself but i would uh, yeah I'm, I'm not i'm not really too sure but yeah well i think it's quite early on in the season obviously we're not even halfway through the season yet and we'll um just have to see how how things plan out but um yeah good question and thanks very much wayne terry nichols the rumor mill is in full swing in world superbikes and we know you both love a good rumor mill thoughts on pachichi returning it returning if he wins moto america right. fho running a world superbike team next year when do you think who do you think will be their riders fancy it chrissy so um i have heard the rumor that fho are looking at 
potentially going to World Superbikes. Obviously, both Hickman and Vickers were racing in Most in Czech Republic this weekend. Um, the... I don't know. I, I think you would obviously have to get maybe Feho or sort of represent that, that would be a good from the, yeah from the team to speak about that. I've got no idea what they're wanting or what they're planning on doing, uh, but I have heard that rumor that they are looking at potentially going world superbikes. So That'd who be class? Who who knows? And I, I haven't heard anything about Petrucci come, come returning after if he wins Motor America. I've, uh, how's I've got, he getting on? Do we actually know how he's getting on? I don't follow Motor. We got. I feel like we're just making homework. Like, with this pod, we're just making more work for ourselves, don't we? They're similar as that. But um, good, good question. I think. I mean, jumping to sort of World Superbikes, it's a, it's it's a hell of a step in terms of the level of riders and if then the best it, you really are like for example Alex Lowe's won, won British Superbikes went to World Superbikes and he's never never been yeah but he's had a podium and podiums no, no, but no, I'm no, just but saying the, the I, level of competition is I extremely totally, high I totally to, agree but to the to, especially the top three aside from the top three uh, you know it's it, things are achievable one one time Alex will be sort of fourth then it's like Rinaldi and then it's Redden and then that, that that seems quite changeable but at the moment the top three are just so far ahead of each ahead of everyone else and obviously three manufacturers as well which is um, yeah it's, it's very impressive in terms of FHO going obviously you know, if that's what they want to do, they'll, they'll have the resources to do that. And you would jump at it, though, wouldn't you? As a rider, you'd, it, I would, oh, God, you'd jump at it. Would you jump at it? What? Jump at the worlds. You know, if your boss, okay, you're right, you're Pete Aikman. Fayo comes through the office door and goes, I want to go to worlds. Um, would you be like, mm, I don't know, or would you be like, mint? I don't know, because realistically, Pete Aikman hasn't got a chance of winning World Super Bikes. If he was on the best bike, Best best bike, best team. If he had the best of everything, okay, you're, you're the Pete very Hick- best that he, the very best that he could do in the championship is what, sort of eighth, ninth, something like that. Right. Like he's got no chance of where it, sticking in BSB, especially if the cha- if the change manufacturers, he, I would he has got a chance, like skill level, he has got a chance of of realistically winning races, breaking lap records, and depends what his goal goal is. Obviously, if his goal is to be right. the main rider at the at the um, road racing, like the best international road racer in the he's world, he's already stamped that one. Yes, guess he's already got that. So <laughs> tick. Yeah, I, I really don't. Know. Obviously, okay, it'd, it'd be great. Dodged... It'd be great traveling the world and kind of things. But at the end of the day, if he's wanting to win, I think the I don't know. After different... the question remains, Chrissy, I'm asking you. You pretend you're Pete Aikman. You know, like, you know what I mean. But well, you kind of no, want. No, yeah. Feo walks in. What would your answer be, Feo? What's that? Would BSB a World Superbike? Oh, no, no, she goes. Let's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Realistically, he's got a very small chance of winning. No, no, either, no, no, so no. You're, you're Pete Hickman. This, yeah, this, I'm, I'm answering. <laughs> uh, he's got a, a realist, a, a, I would say, quite a small chance of winning either of them. So going to World Superbikes, so you're obviously riding at a high level, and it's a hell of a thing to do in that right to do a season in World Superbikes. But who who knows? I have heard that they're looking at changing manufacturers as well. So potentially no, see. Um, I've got no idea who. Who, which other manufacturer? But on, honestly, I've got no idea. Um, but someone like I was jumping it. Look, some take someone like Sean Muir. He's and and uh, Paul Denon. They both they both raced BSB for years, and then they got to a point winning the championship and whatever, and then went on to World Two Bikes. I'm sure if you ask both of those, they, they wouldn't want to come back to BSB. I think the it's a level up, isn't it? Travel of the world and whatever. <laughs> I've got no idea. I'm sure either way, it'll be a fantastic opportunity. Uh, in terms of Vickers stepped in for um, Haslam this this weekend, so Haslam was supposed to be riding uh, for Pachai Kawasaki, but I think he needs to go and do some testing in Suzuka to get ready for Suzuka Eight Hours, which is next weekend. So that obviously gave the place uh, to somebody else. I do believe that um, Skinner and Jackson were both offered the ride because obviously they're Kawasaki riders course, yeah, and it would have made more yeah, yeah. sense but um, both of them I didn't want the opportunity and uh, obviously if, it was a strange one for Vickers because obviously he's riding a BMW this year but jumped on the Kawasaki and got stuck in um, but yeah it's, it's such a it's such a step in terms of level uh, massive level I haven't watched it on uh, on the old uh, boob tube yet but Taylor McKenzie did one with Tara oh, I keep getting the mixed up Taylor and Taron, which one's on the yam are you serious? Mackenzie. I keep getting the mix up, man. Taron. I've had a head knock. Yeah, yeah. so Taron's on that. But he did like um what's 
Oh, there was a comparison oh, yeah, yeah. video. Yeah, for the, I haven't watched that yet. I haven't watched it yet either. Comparison. Uh, it's Which on one's Taylor, easier? It's that on was Taylor's, the question. Yeah, t- on Taylor's YouTube channel. Um, I do know from... He does a mint job edit and then mind from, the stuff he puts on. From class. when Hickman did BSB at Donington, I think he was pretty much matching like say Redden around the track but he was losing a second in the last sector and I think a lot of that comes from the as BSB riders with no wheelie control you kind of get used it's it's a skill that you kind of get used to where with the full electronics it must be really difficult to get the most out of the electronics and and yeah and it was the same for when the Honda riders were testing there with Glenn Irwin Glenn was matching them all the way around the track and then the last sectors where he was losing everything compared to the World Superbike riders. So I think that's where the electronics come massively in, into favour. And um, that's where they were, yeah, kind of making making all the time up there. Interesting. I, th- I mean, who knows? I think you'd have to have a go on one of the bikes to sort of see what the difference is. Um, but it is interesting that not that long ago, BSB riders were doing wild cards so like for example when hopper was in bsb wild carded and put it on pole at silverstone uh, not that long ago it was really common for for wild for bsb riders to to do the world superbike round and to be either winning or getting the podium yeah where i don't know if it's just the differences in bikes but it's all it's the level of competition but for me top rack top rack jonathan and bautista just seems so far ahead of like everyone <laughs> like definitely it's just yeah it's a joke um Good question, though. We've got Paul the Pump. Well done at my Dom. Best, best. And keep working hard, Chris. No, I knew a guy called Petrol Pump for a total different reason. I wonder why that, that's why he's called. Mm, I have no idea. But, um, Do you want to know why my mate was called Petrol Pump? It's something about red diesel. No, no, no. Basically, had a cock exactly the same shape as a Petrol Pump. It looked like he got it jammed in a door. Wow. Like totally got <laughs> So forevermore, he's known in the woodland game as uh, Petrol Pump. Nice. Um, <laughs> so well done at all, my Dom, and keep working hard, Chrissy, improving all the time. I'd like to know what is the most silly, stupid, or idiotic thing you've ever done. Oh, I think that will come straight to you. I think that's um, you'll be stuck for choice on that one. I've got millions. I've got. A, I put a chainsaw in my head for God's sake. I think we're pretty high up on the order on that one. Mm, yeah. uh, Backflip thing, I think, was pretty. Oh, no, that was cool, that. How are yeah. you? I've done loads of daft shite. What about you? Come on. Um, most idiotic thing I've ever done. My <laughs> <laughs> Poor. I have to have a good thing about that. Um, the most... I'll tell you what, one of the biggest near misses was jumping off a, a cliff. Right. You know, in, in the cold water, you know, the body shock element. Mm-hmm. Planky Mill, that. It was like um, like a proper like cliff, like like something like Red Bull, you know, the Red Bull cliff diving competitions kind of thing. This was like in the middle of Northumberland. And the cliff edges were so narrow. You had to take a run and jump and miss the edges. And we all used to go do it. And honestly, I, we did this in February. We made said, there's no way on God's green earth you're going to do that now. And I went, bollocks to you. I'm having it. Mate, the only reason I didn't die is because I, I hit the bottom. Like, I hit the bottom. My body went in the sheet. Like, my chest just went, like, locked in. You know, the second I hit the water. And it's only because I hit the bottom, I pushed off away. That's how high this is. Because the water was so low, you know, we're not like a lot of rainfall coming in, mm. mate. The only reason, only reason I survived, because I literally pushed myself. It was like a like a rock shore. Mm. And I had to chuck a rope, like I had to go get a rope to get us back because I couldn't swim. Like, and I could swim, obviously, but it was that I was that locked Shock. in, mm. shocked in. Said she fished a zoot. But yeah, I was pretty stupid. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying. To th- I'm trying to think of like the most stupid thing I've ever done. I'll have, I'll have to... Pff, I've, nothing, like, j- springs to mind. You've probably never ca- driven a car with a sunroof, have you? Like, you know, the, you know the wind-out back? No, I'd, I'd, so. I had a 1.48 valve Astra. I bought it for 200 quid. It was, like, my first car. It was absolutely class. We used to go down, like, farm lanes, and we used to, like, call them um, Alice in Wonderland. You know, when you got the mad hat at the team, like, team, like, change places, and everyone would, like, oh, get, climb out the sunroof over the bonnet, like, before the car crashed. <laughs> we're like get up the, like, like obviously there was nothing coming but we're like get up to like 80 and see if the car would crash it's like what we're doing but, yeah. I think you can answer that you can have like can a couple of goals yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could be a podcast in its own, in, in its own right um, I'll have to come back on that one naked paintballing that was a good laugh really? yeah everyone in for the crotch it was like natural instinct 
Mm, I haven't been paintballing for years. But well, we had no masks. We all bought paintball guns and just started shooting each other. I can know. <laughs> we are very different people. Yeah. <laughs> I've just... Oh, how, do, how do we get along? It's, it, it, that, that, that should be one of the Patreon questions. How do we get along? We don't know. Uh, Jesse, Jesse Mortimer. Chrissy, yeah, that's coming, by the way. <laughs> yes, yeah. I've just sent that to the post office. Uh, what did it cost uh, you to get Wit to come and talk to you on the grid? Uh, hold on, what? Did he come to you? Yeah, have you not seen that? No. Yeah, he interviewed us just before. It's the first time I've been interviewed live on Eurosport and like on the grid. Mint. So it was really nice of him to come come back to row six. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was spot on. Obviously, it's really good TV coverage. We got a message from Stuart Higgs after the weekend saying uh, the boss of Discovery had messaged him to congratulate him that uh, we had a combined of 370,000 live viewers on Sunday which is like really good for BSB fantastic um, news and yeah and the grandstands were packed it was it was like, pr- yeah like a proper good proper good meeting and uh, hopefully as a sport it's grown and good. Reach, reaching a wider audience so yeah but um yeah it was obviously I didn't pay a whit but um it was very nice of him to come and come and speak to us like it, it's ma- it's so important for people like myself that are like privately funding to race in super bikes um things like that don't the the they mean a lot and especially like to my sponsors and stuff so um it just so happened as well like my main sponsor luke was there for the first first time he's ever been to watch his race and he, he was stood behind us at the time so on the tv and stuff so um yeah it couldn't it couldn't have worked out any better for me so i really appreciate that yeah yeah um dom now the dust has settled and you can properly evaluate your performance at the TT, which I know you don't want smoke blown up your ass, was awesome under the circumstances. What do you think you need to take it to the next steps? Do you feel a bit overlooked at times considering you were reeling in TT winners during this the races this year and are constantly banging on the door in Irish Nationals? Also, obviously, want a full RMI rundown as well. Oh, and last bit, new logo, new merch possibly, my mate. My hat's already a bit worn out. Speaking of hats, Dom, <laughs> yeah, I'll get that hat. Oh, that's me. That needs to send you that, but it's coming. Um, so yes, in terms of do you do you feel like there's anything in particular that's holding you back at the TT? I, I can answer a little bit for you. On your yeah, part. what's your opinion? Go for so it. So massively on the. On the twin, I, d- I didn't think you had a chance just with the uh, sheer speed compared to the patterns, especially. I think it's almost like a different race. I, I truly believe that if you are on a pattern, I think you'd be battling for the race win. Definitely podium, but I, th- I think you can challenge the very best riders on the, on the lower classes. Um, so personally, I think that's holding you back. Uh, the 600... Um, I think you're fa- fairly down on... Well, I know you're fairly down on horsepower and speed, and I think given a better 600 maybe not at the moment i'm not saying like putting her on a good bite and i think you'd win but i I think that whole like were you like seventh in super sport uh eighth i got an eighth eighth eighth, and i think being realistic i think if you were all on the same bikes i think you you could get further up yeah top five yeah yeah, yeah, at the moment which is fair enough so i i I do think you could be on a better bike in the 600 and on the thousand I, i think um not so much the bike because but i think in terms of your pre your your preparation obviously as a privateer it costs a lot of money to like go and do club racing and go and do bsb and the fact that being realistic before turning up to the tt you've had like a little bit of a blast out of the northwest but that's sort of it i think challenging for like seven six seven eight on in the on the bigger bike i think considering the lack of track time and the lack of um the lack of experience that you have i think that that would probably be the biggest factor so if you had like let's say someone give you like say 50 grand and you had a choice of like upgrading your bike or doing loads more track time i think upgrading it's your bike no. there might be a little bit of time but not a great deal but the extra preparation 100%. i think i think where is where you're missing out the biggest yeah no, would, would you agree with no, that? No, no, 100% agree with you. You know, it's. Um, I know you're not very good at blowing smoke up your own arse, but I can blow it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> Steady on, rumour mill there. Yeah. But um, no, yeah, I, I totally agree. That's an interesting comment. You know, it's a bit like if someone gave me, it's like every sponsorship money, anything, any support always goes yeah. back into it, you know, and mm. I think 
Yeah, I completely agree. The bike is mint. Obviously, it's 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 uh, not mint at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. How's the? Someone asked that about the. Yeah, so the um, Michael wrote a god love me. So I bought some like um, inner stanchions, um, outer tubes, and stuff like that. Um, top York Tass Tass racing, absolutely fantastic. But like, so I was actually when I was over at Armoy, I went over to the workshop. What a bit of do you know? Like, um, Philip Neal is a massive motocross fan. They had a motocross team and everything. Tass, you know, right. I had no idea about that. He's got like world championship RM Suzuki's and everything. Like the workshop is class, absolutely class, and it's just, oh, it's just it's it's just brilliantly Irish. You know what I mean? Northern Irish. It's absolutely class. Like I went into the village, got a haircut, and I went over to CK's coffee shop. I'm gonna I'll send Grace the photo. Right, I went into the shop. I was wearing my HG Concepts top. Nothing like you know what I mean. It doesn't it doesn't scream race in this, does it? You know what I mean. We all know in the game what HG Concepts are. But when the count them, they like, hello, you all right? I said, oh, is there any chance to do take out coffee? And I got myself a cappuccino because I'm I'm posh now. You know what I mean? Take outs. And um, she goes, oh, what are you over here for? I said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to Armoy. She goes, all oh, right, no problem. So, oh, what are you doing with money more? I said, oh, I'm just up to see the task lads. I, like I'm just picking up some bike parts. She goes, oh, what's happened? I said, I was involved in a little crash at the TD and stuff like that. I, swept, I went, how much are you for the car? She goes, oh, don't worry about it. You know, well, because you race that? bikes. Because <laughs> I race bikes. Uh-huh. That is just what it means. You know, in, like, you know when I, like, um, like, going back to the Armoury comment, it's just like, you know, all like there's a couple of pubs in the village and stuff like that, and they're all just laced with, like, you know, Michael and Joey Dunlop and Robert Dunlop and, you know, William and Mike. You know what I mean? It's all... Like all the Irish races, you know what I mean? And you just think it's all plastered all over the place and you just think that is just, it feels like going home for me, if you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And you just think it's absolutely class. But no, like I say, I, I was at Tass Race and got some extra bike parts for the BM and, you know, it's coming along nicely. It's coming along nicely. But it's a case of save a bit, you know, save a bit of money, you know, like, and people are coming like, you know, like that gentleman that we need to get a name from, from Piggy, like that 100 quid, that's going into, you know, rear sets and just getting the bike built. But, yeah. but even going back to your point, it's... um. Yeah, it, I, if someone did just turn up and go, there's twenty grand or thirty grand, it would be hundred percent in the track time. Mm-hmm. Not, I would love to go do British. Don't get me wrong, but you know, even like no limits. When you look at the no limits entries, a huge thunder sports just practicing a craft mm-hmm. all the time. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't stop track time. Mm-hmm. But then it, it amazes me what you lads can do. It's like you know, thunder like you know, you're British. You just jump in the deep end. But you're in the right deep end, and that was what I found interesting about your World Superbike comment. Is like I would rather be at the back of the top class any day of the week. Mm. Well, that's kind of a little bit like where I am, where I could be somewhere near the front in Superstock. Yeah, but I'm choosing to to It'd be in the deep end to be in a higher class, but accept that I'm not battling for race wins. So, uh, but I'm riding at a high level. So I guess that would be a similar sort of question for Hickman. But that, the point is, he's it's he's not winning BSB consistently. No, but he doesn't have. That's that's what I find interesting. It's a bit like, what does he want? Like, it, without sounding like a military advert, but you want to be the best you could be. Imagine if you had that opportunity to go and compete at the the the, the highest level. You know, your boss turned up. Like, Let's go up a level. <laughs> Mint. Mm-hmm. He's getting paid to do it. Why the hell not? Mm. So, a lot, like a year at World Superbike with Hickman, where he can run a World Superbike there. TT. He doesn't need to go win another. T- Obviously, he wants to go win another TD, but he's done it to tick the box. Mm-hmm. But imagine a year on that World Superbike, and he takes that World Superbike to the TT then. You're talking about throttle connection in one corner. He's got 264 to play with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> imagine the speed then. Mm. Yeah, fair woo, point. Woo. It'd, be, it'd be hellish, wouldn't it? Mm. The future's bright. The future's orange. We'll to, yeah, we'll have to keep Remember an eye. Remember them adverts? Uh, no. no. <laughs> we'll have to keep, keep an eye on that. Um, Kathy Jones Parry, what's with what's with the new logo? It's really nice. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, just uh, man, she said really shite. That yeah, would be class. The, the actually, Patreon privilege. So the reason that we have actually upgraded the the logo is because the other one wasn't ours. Essentially, yeah, like, we can't. It, there was nothing uh, unique about that bike. Like that, that's used for other things. Where at least this one's we've Surely had that. We, yeah, we've had that drawn for us. So it's ours. Um, Craig Harris. Could you give a shout out to the lads racing in pink at Castle Coombe in a few weeks in aid of cancer research? We would Mate. very much appreciate it and all avid listeners of the cast. So Craig Harris, um, I don't know if the, I presume they'll be raising money. So if you, um, we'll have to find out how to sort of push people towards that. Maybe if you Google Craig Harris or find out 
the the Castle Coom entry list. Uh, but yeah, if, uh, great call. So thanks very much. Andy McCaster, Dom, you broke down on the classic on Friday. Practice at Armoury opposite us provided a bit of entertainment cheering on the butt of the boys. What do you think of the bike and its chances at the classic TT? Good question. <laughs> Strong bike, seriously, seriously strong bike. Like we've been, like, um, like John and Colin asked me to race for them in the classics. Um, when I got the like first time on a classic bike, I got on the podium at the Isle of Man. So I was first privateer, but they used to put the privateer up there, and I think I finished fourth in that race. I was just off the actual podium, and they wanted to build this Yamaha. Now the Yamaha is the same engine design engineering terms is a pattern now the patterns have dominated you know ryan farquhar riding it lock has ridden one mcginnis um josh brooks you know all these lads have just absolutely pissed away you know on this pattern now what it is it's a parallel twin with a four valve overhead twin cam now jamie coward he's on a single like four file four valve overhead so the power distribution can be there and like so John McGuinness has actually ridden the Yamaha that I'm on. He says it's not as quick, but like everything with development, hopefully, you know, it's always them little gains, especially in smaller capacity bikes. Mm-hmm. And I am, I'm feeling confident. And more importantly, I think we te- like my team, uh, do I get to call her teammates? So, no, I <laughs> but uh, Lee Johnson's riding the sister bike to that. And he actually did a vlog on the bike. If everyone wanted to go have a look at that, it's absolutely beautiful. It's on Lee Johnson's vlog. He was around Blighton Park. And like me, John and Colin and Clive and Martin and Karen, everyone in that office, we've just constantly, proper engineering, gone out, broke it, go out, break it again, go out, break it again, try something, try it and spin it around. Lee's ridden it. He's over the moon with it. And Lee's like 18 stone lighter than me. And he can pedal a motorcycle. As much as like Lee's very open, he's like, he's not fussed about the classic TT, in his words. But put a helmet on the lad, shut the visor, he's going for the win. I genuinely believe like me and Lee will push our pattern. 100%. So hopefully, hopefully we can knock them off the top step. But it did shit an engine in our boy. But that's that's the thing. You've got to try something, spin it round. But now at the end of the day, if, if you broke if you broke down, you should still cheer on, especially me mates. Like Anthony Ambley was bombing around there and he was absolutely kicking the shite out of his bike. And it's mm-hmm. great to see. And Andy Hornby he had a big smile on his face. So it's uh, you know the lads and you've got to cheer them on. So yeah. but no, thanks for the support though. Thank you so much for the support. So, Sam Downs, this last one. Is Don planning on doing any more base wee rounds this year? Will either of you be attending the sidecar revival this weekend at Cattle Park? Might be a good chance to get some sidecar teams on the pod. By this weekend I presume it means next weekend, which um I I'm actually commentating on the Suzuka eight hour Mint. down in well I'm not actually going to Suzuka I'm just commentating from no. London so unfortunately I won't be able to be there um, next weekend like you say it would have been a good chance to do some podcasts something a little bit different are yeah. you are you going down D- I didn't even know it was on so I, no I wouldn't mind going I'm gonna go I tell you what that's another thing about our boy is there the Birchels went round on a sidecar I seen that yeah yeah the like... parade so I, I haven't actually had a cracked a, a, a chance to get the crack from them but they had a big smile on their face when they came in so that'll be another interesting element it would be really interesting are you planning on doing any more BSB rounds I would love to uh, <laughs> what, what would you do it on a bit thousand or six hundred I, I don't know what, what what I'm trying to think what I can do you know what I mean so it's Even. like class, so my next round is um no 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 not, I mean that I meant is there date wise because I'm think the classic classic and then Scarborough if it's going uh, there's no there's been like a bit of a confirmation but not I haven't seen an entry form put it that way right okay you know what I mean <laughs> so I don't know what's happening there but um no that's in September so what's after September then don't say a date don't give me a date right, uh, September the 9th and 10th what rounds are left after that for the British yeah, I'll just get the calendar up now. So after we've got Thruxton coming up soon, then Cadwell Park, which, which is, is the 27th to the 29th. Snetterdon's the 9th to the 11th. Not going there. Uh, Ulton Park, 23rd to the 25th. Off. September. Uh, September. Mm. And then we've got the 30th to the 2nd, 30th of September, the 2nd of October is Donington Park, just Our... a week after. And then you've got a week off and then the final round of Brands GP, 14th to the 16th of October. I'd like to do Donington. Mm. Like I've, ne- I've never done a British like Donington. I've done a British Alton Park, 
and it was like that. That's a like, real. It's such a hard track, but it's so good to go like yeah. race round. It's so so, so that, good. If if you were gonna do it, you could do round ten, like the second last last round. And if if you had a choice to do Super Sport or Stock Thousand, which would you prefer? You know, you know what the the, the um, Stock Thousand is hard to qualify. Yeah. That's that is the truth element. Now I'll definitely qualify for Super Sport. Yeah. So because you know the entry look entry <laughs> numbers are a bit lower. Yeah. And I can I know I can put the times in. You yeah. know what I mean? But stock thousand, you don't get anywhere being a soft shite, do you? You know what I mean? And if I want to progress as a rider, you've got to be in the deep end, back of the you know, I'm willing to be at the back of the top class, but mm-hmm. so yeah, in short answer, yeah, I would like to go there on stock thousand. Right, so I'll watch watch that. I, today, I would like I would like to go. And have, if it's wet, I'll definitely have a chance. Have you seen <laughs> um so if, I'm just on the BSB website here. Yeah. So a few big big stories. Have you seen that uh, BMW are introducing a one make series no. to replace the Ducati tri- uh, tri- Ducati Cup? Aye. Um, Did you see Glenn Irwin's tweet about his brother? It was so funny. No. It was like a. It was a congratulations to. Um, what are you thinking? I just think that camera looks on the piss, but it's alright. It probably is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll set it up. But um, no, I think Glenn Irwin's tweet was like, congratulations to um, Danny and Danny and Andrew for, you know, the top performance, you know, like the top qualified. Oh, anyway, it was a piss take. It was funny as hell. Would you, would you fancy doing that series? I would lo- it's like 11 grand for a bike. Mm. I would love to have a go at that. I think, like, I don't know the British tracks that well. You know, I would like to go. It would be a, it would be a good learning curve. But the only problem for me... On a financial element, it's a bike that I couldn't use again. You know, like in other classes, in other thing, classes, yeah. if you know what I mean. And it's yeah. a, a bit of a double-edged sword. It, it's a, it always comes down to fucking cheddar, yeah. doesn't it? So but, if if someone was if 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 you someone was going to pay to like say buy your bike and run you in that, you, hands down, I think that would be ideal for you to be honest. That would be hand, that would be hands down. It'd, it'd be really good television as well, like good TV time for sponsors, and like, it'd be quite. But I think you should maybe maybe start working now to like get some sponsors to try and do that because I think that would be class for you. I, w- I would love to do it, but that would have to be so insular. To you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, like I need a, I'll need to refresh the BM and get. Oh yeah, the little spot. No, I totally no, not no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like tearing you down. As, not, an ex, as an extra to do that, I, I would love to do. You know, if someone just went, I, I don't give a shite about your roads, kind of thing. Mm. But then I went, I want you on me this BM. Mm. I would do it hands we'll down. Look, we'll look into that. Look obviously, deeply down the lens. If anyone would like to, Doctor yeah. Jory for the for the weekend. Obviously, um, <laughs> did you see Brad Jones did his first laps? I, I know he did a track day at uh, Wit. He did a few laps on Wit's track day at Mallory a few weeks ago. But he it, at the same track which he had his tragic accident. Um, he he went out and did a few laps, which was it was amazing to see. And everyone was giving him a round of applause and stuff. It was really cool. Um, I think we'll probably mention it on the last podcast with Lee Jackson, but obviously Mackenzie was back on top form, and amazingly, after the, the apps, uh, after the season he's had so far, he's already into the top eight. He's ahead of like loads of good riders, and considering the the shit that he's been through, is absolutely incredible. And um, with a big. Uh, big news so for Cadwell Park coming up soon the uh, BSB are introducing as a one-off to do Super Bowl so um, the top 15 riders will get a chance to go out do an out lap and they get one lap by themselves to qualify so I'm really hoping that I, I'm going to be in that top 15 because I think that would be absolutely awesome um, the last time they did it also riders could choose a theme tune so you, you had like a song Please. play so on your outlap you had like the, all the um, microphones were playing a song and then so which you choose my question is what would you choose for that? I don't know can't you can't pick Sandstorm that's an Ulster Grand Prix is it? that is the Ulster Grand Prix uh, oh Ooh, for other people to watch it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so it's like so you're your DJing your own. Yeah, your music as your build up to like your your fastest lap that you could possibly do around Cadwell Park. Pretty Spears hit me baby Tell- one more time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on like if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, put some song suggestions in the comments and, and subscribe. I, I don't I don't actually know whether they're gonna do that because last last time you had to choose a song. I don't know if they're gonna do this song again, but uh, I think it would it would be an interesting twist if they do that. It's such a good idea. So yeah, look and song. What song would you pick? Then? Not I'm gonna be there. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to have a think. I'll read the I suggestions. Think classic. I think something classical. I'll. Do you know what? I'm I'm a big Mark Knopfler fan. So Excuse think, me. 
Uh, no, Dire Straits. Right, sorry. <laughs> it's a jo- Jordy. And, um, I've, but it's not exactly like... Jordy Jovaz. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly like uh, G Up music. It's, I'll, I'll listen to that when I'm relaxing, so maybe not that. Um, I'll, have, I'll have a thing. I'll have a thing. I'll read the YouTube comments and then I'll, I'll choose. The uh, most comments, send it to Stuart Higgs and then you'll just get it on the, on the soundtrack. Yeah, I, hope, I hope they do do the soundtrack. I think it's good. Yeah. Um, in, in other news, I think that's pretty much everything that I've had... Go on. Hayden Stark won another British. Yes, my motocross this, this weekend. Yeah, he down is at, flying w- down at Whitby. So twelve uh, points behind in the British Championship. Yeah, so, and that's but... that's that's our little mate from uh, just up the road, and um, he's yeah he's doing absolutely amazing. If if I don't know if it, if people don't watch motocross, but they fancy like sort of following someone, if you check out Hayden Stat on, he's got like Facebook and Instagram and stuff. And uh, if you ever get to motocross, he's a great little lad, and he's um yeah he's properly getting stuck in and doing the business. So dude, I think if. If I was in a financial position to do so, I'd absolutely love to sponsor him myself. Um, but I'll I'll just have to keep. No, that's this... right though, isn't it? It's like eight yeah. grand would change his entire yeah. life. Well, not not even that. Like a lot lot less than. No, that, no, but... but I mean, like you know, put him in Belgium. You know. Yeah. In terms of, um, a sp- I know we were talking earlier about like options for next year and stuff. So into there's there's lots of pros and lots of cons from kind of. Um, doing it as a as a privateer team obviously the biggest the biggest uh, sort of con of kind of doing it yourself if you like is obviously the, the financial element like it costs a lot of money um i'll happily at some point i'll happily go through it on the podcast and talk about like exactly what it costs to do everything and all the all the sort of bills and stuff but um and it, I, I think it's interesting because people won't have any sort of idea about like to go bsb race and like what sort of money's involved but it's um <sighs> I do find it like really stressful, like racing and running it all, uh, and yeah, and yeah, like and finance fun. financing it all, and making sure like I've got sponsors and looking after the the financial element as well as like the, the track stuff and like making sure we've got stuff prepared and spares and like literally is non-stop in between the rounds. Like it, it is quite stressful, but there is there's a, there's like a rewarding side to that as well, which is like. As a, as our little small team and the volunteers, and I've got such nice people around us. When I pull into the garage and you know, like say at the weekend, like say when I got through to Q two, pull in the garage and there's like everyone's there clapping and beaming and like there's like a great sense. And I wouldn't have if if somebody was paying me to turn up to do a to ride for a team and I was uh, things. Obviously, the, the, it's it's not the same. It's um, it's very much like a family of like. And everyone's there for the right reasons, and it's 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 brilliant, and that's that's why like I d- don't regret my decision doing what I'm doing. Um, I look at other other people in like who have went down different routes, and I just I, I don't think oh I wish I was like like them and having like because t- yeah yeah with with the struggle comes there's like a lot of it's like worthwhile I think yeah um and yeah I would it's a good question like what would I prefer would I prefer a big sponsor to come in and kind of do it myself or would I prefer to ride for a, a top team and not have to have any of the worries this side I think there's pros and cons but yeah I, I do I do absolutely love having having like a small team and like the you know obviously all the crow performance lot and all yeah it, it's cool I'm like rabbiting on just talking shit but yeah um mate we've been doing that for three years don't worry about it I know <laughs> in uh, have you got anything else to wrap things up um no, no uh, well, uh, hold on. Um, force field of Duggars out of a ditch and Kex underwear. So obviously, I put up. This is ages ago, like um, after the crash. Um, got cut on me lever, me RST levers. Shameless plug, getting there. Wear my YRI helmet. <laughs> no, but um, force like they cut me back protector office, cut me Kex office, and there uh, Ed from Kex has given us some brand new boxes, which is absolutely class of them. And uh, force field patterned uh, force field has um stepped up, and I've got. Brat, I tell you what, it's absolutely class. Like they've got the the base layers, like um both, they've got like two piece legs and top, you know. But mate, the, like I got this onesie given it, and the back protectors built in with the chest. You know, you can take them out to wash it and stuff like that. The weekend, normally I've got the 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 mod the the model two, which is like the big strap one. It's it's a lot thicker as a back protector, and it gives you a lot like a lot of confidence wearing it. But I got the one that's built into it, like all is a massive onesie outstanding i don't normally like wear base layers at all i just no. never i've just never have kind mm. of thing i thought you know what i'm gonna give this a fair try and because the base layer like 
the back protector, it's just so much comfier because there's a lot less like moving parts that the Velcro doesn't rub. You know, like the actual straps to it doesn't actually get in your way, especially on the like a smaller bike, not rather than the big bike, especially on the little 250 because it curves to your back because it's like properly welded onto you. Mm. It, it's mint, absolutely mint. And the fact of getting your levers on and off, it's like, do you wear base layers? I, I wear them up top. For some reason, I just kind of wear the trouser ones. I, I feel right. really uncomfortable on the bike. With I've, I've tried it before and I hate it. But um, I, I really like top top layer ones and full sleeve ones. Ah. Um, yeah. But do you find them a chew to get on? Like, you know, when the sweat goes to the inline of the suit, do, do they stick a bit or can you get them off quite easily? Uh, no, I get in all right. Ah, because yeah. like, well, for me, like normally I'm going in commando, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah. no, no, I wear boxers, but I don't oh, wear right. anything. Like, and fuck, like I'm like, oh god, like the amount of sweat I just clag to the end, like the side of it, mm. and um, I can't get them off. But with this suit, it's absolutely class. Um, it's it's the new suit. I'll have to find the exact. It's the it's the 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 most recent one from Forcefield, and it is absolutely class. I'm really, really, really big fan of it. Mm-hmm. So. Now, hopefully, if I touch wood, don't crash and they cut me out of it, it'll last me forever. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, no, that, that's my uh, shameful plug. For, but no, honestly, it, it, you can't do it without sponsors and you know some help there. So I'm I'm very, very grateful for them. Very, very grateful. Fantastic. Well, um, massive thank you to our sponsors, Colchester Kawasaki, and a big shout out to all of our patrons. Um, for, for those that uh, don't know what the patron system is, it's like a way of uh, financially supporting us doing the podcast. Yeah. So it's... Um, there's like three tiers on there. The the lower tier, you get to ask guests questions. Uh, so you get like prior knowledge to who the guests are and get asked questions. And then the middle tier, you get obviously ask questions as well. And you also get um, early access to the podcast. And the top tier, you get the same, but you also get to send video messages, voice notes, and you also get a chance to win, win uh, competition stuff. And also we do some Zoom chat sometimes and you get involved in them. So a few different options, but... Um, we really appreciate everyone that does yeah. f- uh, support us on that it's, uh, it does massively help out and um, yeah look forward so next weekend I say I'm uh, commentating on Suzuka sorry that'll be like the weekend that this goes out so the next weekend we're at Thruxton and uh, you're getting ready for the Classic TT which is t- not until it's a while away isn't it no two weeks away two weeks away it's all done you'll be Cadwell that weekend your cattle that weekend. Yeah. yeah, sorry, it's all blur. It all blurs, man. It all yeah. blurs. Excellent. Well, uh, look after yourself and thanks ever so much for watching. Catch up soon. See you in a bit. Chasing the racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki. Part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles.